Hey everybody, this is the Let's Do Summerfield of Metal Gear Mondays coming at you before the episode. Whoa, please don't hit that 15 seconds ahead button. Uh, essentially, what I'm trying to say right now is that I wish we could patch podcasts like we can patch video games. Uh, we kind of can, but not really. So what I'm going to say is you're going to hear a lot of gibberish and nonsense about some like Forever and Astronaut Patreon or... I don't know what, because this is forever ago. What you need to go to is patreon.com slash Metal Gear Mondays or Facebook or SoundCloud Metal Gear Mondays. Uh, Twitter at Metal Gear Monday for the real deal um, and all the latest news. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. I don't like the word robust. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, you are listening to Metal Gear Mondays, the official, unofficial Metal Gear podcast, uh, where we play all the games inside and out, left to right, up and down, hopefully in chronological order, but who really knows? As always, I am your host, Alessio Summerfield, and this week I am joined by Samuel Wright, uh, Spaghetti, Isaac Lim, <laughs> Tortellini, <Nee. laughs> And uh, this week we're joined by a very special guest, uh, Zach. Taco Bell. Nah, oh, wait. No. We can say his we can say his last name on the podcast. Yeah, but well, now we have to, <laughs> Sam. It's, keep it secret. Keep it safe. Don't say it. Wait, out so listen, before we start, I got. Hold this, on. If you say can... his full name, though, you you don't have to give up your firstborn child, and then you control the demon. <laughs> oh, is it kind of like Beetlejuice, or is it like? It's uh, if you imagine a Beetlejuice, Rumpelstiltskin, Candyman situation. It's one of those. Hold and on, a Slender Man. It looks like Sam dropped out of the call. <gasps> oh no! Already so soon. <laughs> um, Zach, continue with what you were saying while Sam gets reconnected. <laughs> so I've got this NES cartridge of Snake's Revenge sitting on my desk. Do you really? I do. I'll in fact I'll hold it up so the webcam can see it right now. That's awesome. I know, and I gotta say, I am glad I never played this game based off what you guys reviewed. <laughs> it's fucking awful. Um, have, so so you've, you still haven't played it? I still haven't played it, and I fully intend not to now. Okay. And I was so I was gonna I had an idea. What are we sitting at for Facebook likes and like uh, and all that? Um, I think Facebook wise we're at like 198 likes. I know Forever and Astronauts at like almost 500, and then Dev Diary just broke 500. What milestone would you guys like to hit that would incite me to make a video of this thing burning or destroyed or somehow? Um, I I don't know. I mean, if we hit two hundred, <laughs> it, it's very realistic. So if you want to, it depends. It depends on uh, how how badly you want to destroy that card. I don't care. I bought it from like a secondhand shop. It probably doesn't even work. Okay. Well, we could set it at let's two hundred. Two hundred. And it looks like Sam's back. Sam. Hey, I'm back. All right, so <laughs> if we get two hundred, fi- if we hit two, <laughs> well, hold, hold on. Let me t- let me tell him. So, okay, Sam, I'll give you two attempts to guess at what I have sitting on my desk right now. Uh, wait. I don't know what. I'll give you a hint. It's, to guess? it's something that you. Uh, it's something that you what? absolutely despise. That you absolutely despise. That you it's absolutely Metal Gear related. It's related to the um, show. Isaac has no idea what it is. Is it Snake's Revenge? It is. <laughs> wow. All right. Ah. I won. I won. I won it. What did I win? Uh, you win the opportunity to view a video of me burning and destroying this thing when we get 200 likes of the show. Sick. Yeah, so Facebook, <laughs> 200 likes is actual <laughs> video him destroying. This one right here. I think if Nick Freda hears this, he's going to be a very happy man. <laughs> very, very happy man. Very nice. Um... So before we get started, I just wanted to do a special thing um, really quick. Um, I'm very hung up on last week. Um, I haven't forgotten uh, Metal Rear Solid, the Phantom Teen. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, no. And yeah. My butthole <laughs> I was tensed doing... up the moment you said the title, Ella. <laughs> <laughs> I, was doing some, I was doing some thinking, and I was like, what about other video games that haven't had porn parodies? Okay. What would we call those? And I wanted to list off a couple that oh, I came up with. Oh, no. Um, so 
I'm going to start off uh, with Ass Creed. Very low effort. <laughs> oh, my God. But, um, I think it's definitely worth it. <laughs> I think including. it writes itself. Uh huh. Um, so we're going to start there. The people, fans of the game, fans of the genre call it Ass Creed anyway. Um, and then uh, on a similar vein, I'm going to go with Ass Effect, which, <laughs> which is also very low effort. I think but I cool. came up with. I, well, listen, but I came up with a sequel to Ass Effect for the new Andromeda, and it's Ass Effect Your Mamada, and it's a milk <laughs> porn. All right, what else you got in your bag? Um, next up, uh, God of War. Okay. Nice. I don't, uh, you don't want to do think plural? That's a thing. No, because there's only one whore, but there's and mul- whores does not rhyme. But there's multi but whores does not, in the, in the whores game. Whores does not rhyme with war very well. <laughs> I liked your so, caveat there at the end. Very well. <laughs> Very well. All right. It's not a true rhyme. What I'm else? only about true rhymes. Here. What else you got? Um, so in in the very famous Witcher series, we we love The Witcher. Um, it's a good game. But what about the bitcher, wild cunt? <laughs> that's, it just sounds weird. like one of my ex girlfriends. Oh no. Oh, oh shit. Not Danielle. I still love make Danielle. It burn her. Good. Oh, we, make we it burn them. Make it burn Danielle. <laughs> We all love Daniel still on this podcast. It's never stopped. Danielle, if you close um, your eyes wherever you are right now and just imagine a group of four men who all just said that they love you, just know that we're no, sending those vibes no, out. No, no, fuck. Um, to, moving swiftly along. Okay. Um, Do you have any slant rhymes I, um, for me? Slant rhymes? I'm not entirely familiar with what that is at the moment with my brain now. It's working, Sam. so I'm going to ignore that question. Um <laughs> Um, I did Overwatch, even though it's already a one, because I came up with a better name. It's Overcrotch. Oh. It actually rhymes instead of Oversnatch. It rhymes. Uh-huh. This is where this is where they start getting creative, okay? And I'm very proud of this one. What about Dante's Inporno? <laughs> Remember that great game, Dante's Inferno? What about Dante's Inporno? That's pretty good. And he actually, and he actually fucks the lust. He actually fucks. With the, with the you tongue. With the tongue. The, well, that's true. <laughs> This is the this is the worst. I'm um, say so this one here. Um, I'm very proud of the second half of this one. Um, not so much the first half, um, but I'm hoping the second half makes up for it. I've got Kingdom Orgy three five eight gays over two. Um, oh. that's, that's a that's a gay porn. I, I just thought you might enjoy that. Three five eight gays over two. <laughs> what? Who are the two? Are the two straight? Like, who are the two things that are? <laughs> well, it's one of those ones where where. The straight guy has to pretend to be gay for money. Oh, and no. the two yeah. is two of them this time. So, so it's um, and, rape. Then the, and then the last one um, is one that I'm very proud of. Um, and it's Halo, literally just fuck Cortana, you know you want. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, <laughs> those are my video game porn parodies to go along with Metal Rear Solid. The Phantom Pain. I'm sure, uh, I'm thank sure you. your supervisor is uh, really appreciative of the time you're putting into this at work. Well, yeah. <laughs> he actually he carved it onto the desk at work with a knife. <laughs> I couldn't find a pen. I had to get these things written down. That's good. I like yeah. it. So that that's a great segment, and I love that segment. But I think now is the time to unveil our favorite segment, which is... <laughs> Fumbling in the Dark with Isaac Lim. <laughs> So I, don't, I, I didn't know if that's where, oh my I didn't know if that's where you were Please. going, no, absolutely. but it's my favorite segment. Yes. Okay, cool. Isaac, what I, happened no. in the last episode? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what did happen Yeah, we talked episode? about the generalities <laughs> of Metal Gear Solid 4. <laughs> no, but the other, and, other episode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's that, that was a half episode. It doesn't count. Anybody else's throat just get dry? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bottle of water right next to me, baby. No dryness here. <laughs> yes. Got my Vaseline uh, somewhere. Uh, be careful. Stay oh, away goodness. from Lower California. <laughs> <laughs> well, little do you guys know, you're listening to this now, little do you guys know that porno put us on like a completely different level. So the energy is like very different in like the virtual room that we were all sitting in right now. Yes. Hey, yeah, Sam, so what, what Sam, you guys I don't know is we have, a, we have a Metal Gear Monday Second Life chat room that we all hang out in. <laughs> <laughs> go, go ahead, Zach. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just gonna tell Sam how I got him beat. You know, he he had to try to watch it at work while I listened to that episode at work. <laughs> oh, he did. It was great, and without fucking headphones because Zach's a true patriot. Ooh. Well, here's the thing: I watched it at work without headphones. Oh, yeah, but you can mute that. Hold on, you didn't tell us that part, Sam. That's a little much. Sam, <laughs> did you mute it? 
Um, no, because <laughs> I work by myself. And also, I want to throw this out there. I listened to the episode, and I thank you for mute for for bleeping out. Oh, yeah. the thing that I said about where I work. Yeah. Oh yeah. I wasn't even thinking about <laughs> I'm, that. I'm a where? And also. <laughs> <laughs> and also for editing out my very illegal suggestion at the yeah. end of the episode. No, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh man, we gotta t- we gotta talk later, Sam. I want to know now. <laughs> oh, for, for sure, I got you. Yeah, it's not like Milo illegal, but it is internet illegal. Yeah. Oh boy, oh, that Jesus. that whole just thing. Of, yeah, just can to, we not talk about? No, that we'll continue title. on the show. So anyway, uh, <laughs> politic aside, um, this episode is going to be covering the first half of the first act of Metal Gear Solid 4. And just to let everybody know, um, we have every act split into two episodes. Um, some of those splits have the same guest on each episode. Some of them do not. Um, Zach, please don't take that as pressure. You don't have to be on the next act half if you don't want to. But we are going to be splitting them up just to make them a little bit more palatable for podcasts. Because I think each act, as far as gameplay, clocks in at about four hours each. And I think uh, <laughs> there's so much shit packed into every act um, and into every hushy that we have to <laughs> kind of <laughs> talk about it, talk about it, and talk about it in splits. Anyway, we're gonna, we are going to we're going to pummel we're gonna, this game's butthole. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna rinse that out of our minds, and we're gonna move into the <laughs> opening first half, Act One of Liquid Sun, which is the first act of Metal Gear Solid Four. <laughs> Um, real quick, as we go around the room, I did want to talk a little bit about, so I think we may all have a little bit of a different sort of opening experience. Um, just so you guys know, I'm playing it on solid normal mode, um, because I don't have my original saves because I've got a new PlayStation 3. Um, new as relative, new as of like four or five years ago, as opposed to like a launch <laughs> PS3. Um, and I got the David Hayter commercial intro and chose not to change the channels. So I'd be curious to see what you guys got and how you're playing and all that jazz. My other caveat is I'm trying to get as few alerts as possible. And since this game allows you to save wherever the fuck you want, which is great, um, I've been saving at the beginning of every zone. And then if I fuck up, I just reload from the beginning of the zone so that I can like hotline Miami my way through the game. Um, so yeah. So what about I want to throw this out there really quick. I do miss calling a codec number. Yeah, I do um, too. I appreciate, I appreciate the ease of saving but like calling a codec number is so ingrained in my like memory. Like I remember when I played the first one and I didn't want to like I, w- I was confused and I was scared to like move on because I fr- I was afraid I was gonna fuck up. Um, I would just spend an hour in the codec just calling people over and over again, mm-hmm. and I miss that. Yeah, That's I true. don't miss calling the save number and every time going, "Do you want to save?" No, I call this number for a different fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> poor Mei Ling. Do you remember what today is, Jack? Oh God, oh, that was no. the worst. She launched to like a twenty-five minute tirade. It's like I just wanted to save. Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. So also, I will throw this out there, and I don't want to like seem like I'm being a wimp, but uh, this show has no contract, so it doesn't fucking matter what difficulty I play on. So how about that? Um, can we Whoa. can we change the difficulty in the middle of the game if it? starts to be a pain in the ass to cover for the show or do you yeah, guys know if, yeah if you want to be a say, soft boiled right yeah. if you want to be a real soft wanna be baby just a, a soft wanna boy be just like a really <laughs> like a really really just a soft boiled baby boy <laughs> then you can go right a fucking head can you though i don't know if you can oh physically i have no oh i thought you were like, asking if, if it was can. like okay <laughs> oh no i don't need your permission okay <laughs> <laughs> you're on my turn <laughs> Just yeah. a soft boy, baby boy. Soft boy with the beard of a hard man. Yeah, I'm rocking it really over your baby face. Please. Let's the beard move on. of a hard man. Ooh. <laughs> well, anyway, so what So what modes are you guys playing on? What are you doing? Uh, are you guys just fucking around? Are you playing on easy? Are you playing on hardcore? I know old uh, Ben Garibaldi Smith is playing this shit on like big boss hard boy mode. What Ooh. about you guys? I got me on that solid normal. That solid normal. I've played every game... So far, on normal, mm. that I can choose the difficulty of, and I am not changing that now. Nice, Isaac. Yeah, I've got it on the, well, you know, the normal mode. I figured I'd try it out instead of being easy, <laughs> like I usually do. Oh no! 
<laughs> yeah, I'm going to be curious to see if Ben Garibaldi Smith can keep it going uh, up until he guests on the show. I'd be curious to be like, hey, you still on that hard mode? Um, so we'll find out. But Zach, how are you? How are you playing it? I think you've got a special situation that you told me about. Well, normally I do play it on solid normal, but I actually don't own a PS3 right now. Um, and I actually just stopped by the secondhand store to see the pricing for them today. So I'm going to try to pick one up next week and then play catch up to actually play with you guys. So in the meantime, I'm just using a long play to uh, just catch up on the details and using memory from past playthroughs on that. So nice, you know, yeah, I so will. Hard, <laughs> hardcore. <laughs> he's hard. Yeah, he's, hardcore he, big boss. Mode. Zach just likes to watch you guys. <laughs> That's the hardest <laughs> core of them all. <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, I'll include the long play in the show notes for anybody who doesn't have a PS3, since as we covered on the last episode, this game is PS3 exclusive, and I don't think it will ever change. So I will include. Is a long it not play available you, on the PS4? Xbox boys. Um, it is not. I don't really. Think. Not unless you. Uh, mm-hmm. I think if you have PS, what the fuck is it? PlayStation Now, where you can stream PS3 games. Um, mm-hmm. I think you can stream it through PlayStation Now on uh, Sony branded TV devices or PS4 or I think they cut Vita support recently, so maybe not on that. They cut. I'm pretty sure they cut Vita and PS3 support. Yeah, so you can only do PS4 and like Sony branded Blu-ray players. That maybe. sounds incredibly convoluted. Yeah, thank you, Sony. So no. <laughs> um, but yeah, as I had alluded to, they when you start the game, uh, before the game properly starts, you've got all these like weird TV channels. Um, you can scrub <laughs> through them with your D-pad. Um, I don't know if other buttons do other things. Um, I just use the D-pad. Um, the other cool feature, which is going to be a fucking blessing for all of us on the show, is you can pause cutscenes. So you can press start in the <laughs> middle of any of this and uh, write some shit down without skipping or missing anything. So huzzah. Mm-hmm. You can also skip them that way as well, which I think is new. No, it's not new. I'm stupid. You can s- skip them in the other games too. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Thankfully, I'm to I don't write myself. anything down, so I don't have to pause. Did you guys see the uh, – I scrubbed through right at the very end God. just to see what the channels were. Did you guys see the Hideo 1 and Hideo 2 instead of Video 1, Video 2 channels? Yep. Those cracked me up. Does anybody know if anything happens on those channels? Because they were just black when I saw them. No, I remember there was a point in time where I would reset the game every five seconds to like watch all of them, and it was always just a black screen. I think it was just a callback to Metal Gear Solid One. Gotcha. Much like this game is a callback to literally everything. Yeah. Um, what What did you guys end up watching with the commercials? Did you flip through? Did you pick one and just stick to it? The David Hater one's really fucking weird, and we can talk about that one if you guys <laughs> want. But um, I think that this go around, I stayed on the game show. Oh, that one's weird too. I guess they're all weird. Um, they're all fucking bizarre. Which ones were on the long play that you watched, Zach? Uh, I think it's actually doing it how it was sort of originally planned, where it's playing a different commercial uh, before each act. Uh, so the one that I watched was the David Hayter one with the, uh, I believe it was the Praying Mantis commercial right after that. Oh, mine right after that was at the got uh, like the Never a Shot in the Dark. Yeah, I, th- I thought that was the uh, I thought that was for the praying mantis because oh, that is. that was associated with the first well, act. Each, each channel has a different PMC attached to the end of it. Yeah, I know there's one so, from the past that I remember watching where it was like some people scuba diving, and then there were like shots of an octopus, and then at the end it was like the whatever the fuck the octopus one is. I think that was the one that was after the game show. Oh, okay. Yeah, the game show one's really weird. So, yeah, just to let you guys know, these are kind of, like, weird, like, day-in-the-life snippets of, like, what TV in this weird future is. Um, And the one that I got was David Hayter talking about a movie that he's going to be on, or that's what he was trying to do, but instead the interviewer got really fucking weird and asked David Hayter, like, (laughs) existential questions. Um, and he's wearing the fucking eye patch the entire time. Yeah, he's wearing like the solid eye, which appears in this game later. Um, and they talk about it very loosely, almost as if somebody would talk about like an Apple Watch or something. Um, they're kind of asking him like why he's wearing it and what it does and stuff like that. But she also starts to ask him about like why he creates and like she name checks that he's like a famous like story writer for movies and stuff. Um, but yeah, we get to see David Hayter in the flesh in a Metal Gear game, which I think is pretty cool. Um, Isaac, which isn't one did that, you get? Isn't that the actual voice actor? Yeah, David Hayter is, is solid. Snake. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. David Hayter. Um, <laughs> don't get it. Twisted. I wasn't aware you could do any of that. Oh, you didn't so flip I, through. Okay, to be honest, <laughs> when I started this game, it was really late, and I was um, kind of going in and out. 
Um, <laughs> oh, you're fine. And so, I love perfect, their burgers. Perfect place to be when you're watching this stuff. <laughs> it was really trippy. It was kind of freaky, actually, with the, the interview going on. But I had no idea you could swap channels or whatever with the D-pad. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's right at the very beginning, so if you want, you can always start a new game and just scrub through it or whatever. True. Um, also, I'm sure there's a bunch of YouTube videos of it. So. I, l- um, I like how Alessio put in this future, and immediately my mind was like, what is this, an 80s movie in the future of 2014? <laughs> <laughs> if it was an 80s movie, it would say 1999. Like a wide shot of like Los Angeles on fire with like flying cars. One like man, one mission. Size. Yeah. Anyway. Well, this game took place in 2009, right? Like in the in the game universe. 2014. Uh, or Metal 2014, Gear Solid yeah. 2 was in uh, 2009. 20. Oh, no, never mind. I'm thinking about Sons of Liberty. Yep. So this is Guns of the Patriots, not Sons of the Patriots, not Guns <laughs> of Liberty, uh, Guns of the Patriots. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and get started uh, since we've got quite a little bit to cover. Um, so it sort of opens with the in the not so distant future on a distant <laughs> battlefield war has become routine um, and then we get these like really fucking cool so <laughs> I think really fucking cool opening credits and decay and death in the Middle East as like a troop transport starts to kind of drive um, however uh, and I'm not even joking within seconds of the unlisted video of the last episode getting posted to YouTube for patrons to check out uh, fucking Konami hit us with three copyright infringement claims right out the gate Wait, and really yeah yeah and two of the three I'm not even <laughs> fucking kidding two of the three were Kojima productions like they got pissed oh, that the shit. text Kojima productions was in the videos um, and then the first copyright mark was uh, for this for the fucking opening credits of this game for some reason um, come get me, Ko- come get me, Kojima. Yeah, come on, Wait, come on, come after me, uh, Kojima. I, I don't. Yeah, get it. So, well, yeah. So I guess Konami got mad that we put Kojima Productions in a video that also had their game on it. I guess oh, they're trying to like scrub boo, fucking out who. Kojima. So yeah, it's weird. Um, obviously, we contested it. Um, they they didn't count as like actual marks against the channel. Um, they were just sort of like little whatever the fuck, like hit on the wrist, slap on the wrist kind of marks that are like, oh, hey, now Konami's going to play some ads on this video, Um, which is fine. But just a heads up, apparently if you're a YouTuber and you're streaming uh, Metal Gear, uh, be weary that if you have Kojima Productions in your video, people will freak out, apparently. So that's fun. Fucking dumb. Yeah. So, (laughs) But anyway, we see the names of all of our favorite familiar sort of uh, voice actors in this really cool Metal Gear Solid 4, like, brushstroke calligraphy font, which I really dig. Um, And we see Snake mixed into a troop transport with a bunch of soldiers, and he's, like, kind of dressed up like they are and kind of hanging out. Um, You see his dad's stash. uh, Hanging out. (laughs) More like a grandpa stash. My grandpa has got the same mustache. Yeah. Um, and uh, we get a nice little fuck you to Fallout in the very beginning where Snake goes, war, war has changed, <laughs> as opposed to war never changes. Um, and he essentially goes on a monologue about how uh, war has become an endless series of proxy battles. Um, he kind of sets the scene for this like location and sort of, I guess, the, the backdrop for the whole game. Um, he talks about how ID tagged guns from ID tagged soldiers are kind of like the norm. Um, he talks about a really bleak nano machine future where everyone's got all this stuff going on. Um, and if you're playing Metal Gear Bingo with all of us, um, he mentions information control and nano machines in the first like three minutes of the game. So go ahead and check those Whoa. off on your bingo card. I, I, <laughs> I, I gotta say, the whole ID tagged weapons to ID tag soldiers concept is so freaking stupid. Like, yeah, just... <laughs> I just we see well we see it all the time too because I remember I think it was in this if you played Doom three I'm pretty sure in Doom three there's the whole rigmarole of like the guns are set to the which is why you can't like pick up the guns off of the dead bodies because they're like set to the I guess uh, bio rhythms of the person that they belong to or whatever and I know that it happens in this game a little bit too so yeah I mean it's a it's a trope of sci-fi like action I guess. Hmm. Um, and I don't, I don't know. I don't buy into it. I think it's stupid. I think if you're on a battlefield and you're fighting, that obviously you're, uh, I, at the very least, your whole squad's gonna have access to your weapons. I don't see them like yeah, locking. Yeah, out. guess what? If one of your guys gets friggin' tagged, you know, and you need to lay down some suppressive fire, you're grabbing whatever weapon you can grab. 
Yeah. So I feel like it'd be very counterproductive to the... To Jim, the give me your finger! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cut off your fucking finger, I need it! Yeah. So, But then we end Throw on... Throw it over! We end on this uh, very po- poignant quote, um, which I believe is uh, not originating within Metal Gear, but is actually like a historical quote, which is, he who controls the battlefield controls history. And I think that's Winston Churchill, I think? I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Don't even... Don't here, even you here, don't hear me say that. Here, I'll look it up real quick. You guys keep talking. Okay, cool. We'll vamp. <laughs> so we get to the, uh, for us, it's foreshadowing. For everybody circa 2008, it was not. But we are introduced to the first zone, Ground Zero. Um, mm. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yep. And then uh, right out the gate, uh, the scale and scope, the scale and scope of the environments that we are going to be playing in are fucking gigantic compared to past games. Mm. Um, the moment your truck gets into the area that it needs to get into, and it kind of slams into another truck, and snakes kind of pinned in there, and we've got a little bit of like this crazy action sequence going on. The moment that you get control as a player to be in this zone, I mean, granted you're between two trucks and this like little nice environment to like learn the controls for a second but once it kind of opens up it's like this whole zone is like i mean there's a shit ton of artificial intelligence like interacting with other ai there's different dynamic situations happening across the battlefield um i'm not sure how much of it is scripted and how much of it is kind of like whatever the hell the ai wants to do at the time um but it's just there's a lot of shit going on and it's almost like right out the gate this is a uh, tech demo for the ps3 where it's like look at all the shit we can have going on on screen at the same time um so i thought it was pretty neat what did, and by, you, what did you guys and think? by doing that they make they make they give you way more options too like as far as what you can do and how you can traverse terrain and how you choose to proceed um and it kind of opens up the game the series really for the for the first time in, in the series really mm-hmm. in a way that like you never really considered before yeah it's right, a little overwhelming because everything else was like a static shot of like okay he's he's either swimming in he's bungeeing in or he's parachuting in and then bam you're into it where this is sort of like well ah, you know shit's already kicked off you know you don't have a quiet moment to yourself yeah this is the first time in the series we're actually on a fucking battlefield i feel like um, oh, absolutely. Which is, inter- which is interesting because all the other games were like, oh, can love blossom on the battlefield? And like, <laughs> oh, shit. Like, the battlefield's so intense. It's like it's like you spent three movies hearing about how bad the ring is. The battlefield. Yeah, and then, like, here we are, movie four. Here's the actual thing. And it's like, oh, okay. Um, I don't know. I was very overwhelmed. I mean, I've played... So, uh, spoiler alert, this is like the second time I've played this game all the way through. Um, So the first time I played it all the way through, I was very much so just like, oh shit, let's go. This is crazy. And I didn't really pay attention to a lot of details. I was just very excited to play. Um, But this is the first time that I've played it with like an analytical eye. And I've definitely not played 4 as much as I have played the others. But for me, it's like every time that I've restarted this game and tried to make a go of it... um, I'm always just, like, so fucking overwhelmed, not just by, like, the menus, but, like, just everything. Like, you have to look above you, you have to look below you, you have to look all around you. Like, nothing is safe anymore, unlike the other Metal Gears, where, like, when you cleared out a room, you felt like, okay, like, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, But in this, it's like, there's shit happening everywhere. Um, And it's, I mean, it's intense. Isaac, how, how did you handle the intensity? I actually, yeah. So when it dropped me in, um, let me remind you, this was pretty late in the night and I was <laughs> going in and out, <laughs> but I was pretty overwhelmed. I was like, I don't understand. I, I'm kind of scared. And, um, I would go, I would crawl through the area and then, uh, <sighs> get spotted and i'm like this is ridiculous actually i didn't die in this little segment if you will can you die Um, in this segment i don't know i'm not sure if anybody could die it would be me but (laughs) i didn't well and i will say Um, too the, the weapon that they start you off with the stun knife um i always it's a little tricky to use because you have to hold down like l1 to be in the aim mode and then you have to press r2 to use the actual like stun mm. capability 
If you just hit like that R1, back. you just swing the fucking knife. And I, I was trying to play non-lethal. First fucking dude I encountered, I accidentally just hit R1 and like <laughs> one shot at him. And I was like, I'm not even kidding. I spent like a good five minutes just being like, please don't be dead. Are you dead? Please don't be dead. And like trying to like shake him. And I'm like, dude, you're still alive. Wake up. It's fine. You do the thing like, where you crouch the and then you pat him and you said, get up. Yeah, I was like, come on, dude, you're all Get right. Get up, please. <laughs> just pat him in the butt. Yeah, it was just like, hey, dude, mom, mom's going to come any minute now, man. I'm going to get in trouble. You're fine. You're fine. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, this was back in the day all, when, all like, older siblings have been in that, that situation. <laughs> Go ahead, Sam. This is back when people realized that the, that the PlayStation 3's triggers were absolute garbage. So they mapped the shoot button to the R1 and the mm. R1 buttons. Oh, yeah. It was the worst. That's a good point. It was the worst. Hmm. Yeah, which is weird, especially considering that R2 and L2 are, like, the pressure-sensitive buttons. So it's weird mm-hmm. that, like, they... Yeah, they changed everything up because it's so... We mentioned it last episode, but, like, the first-person view, you have to, like, hold L1 and then press triangle to get into first-person, mm-hmm. which I thought was interesting. But... Yeah, you get, a, you get a great story in arthritis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Metal Gear, the man-simulating game. Uh, yeah, I feel like... Well, and so for me, I will, I will say this. Metal Gear Solid Five and Ground Zeroes, and even to some extent Peace Walker, I think they streamline the controls to make it more enjoyable. Oh, I definitely. Feel like, I feel like this is the last Metal Gear game that uses like hard traditional Metal Gear controls. Um, and I mean, we've got quite a lot of content after four to cover, and I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm going to miss this because for some like to some extent i feel like the control scheme is what defines metal gear um and like the shoulder buttons being triggered to like bring up the cool little like whoop whoop, like little like side Mm. menus and stuff like that's a very metal gear thing and so like to not have that um i feel like this is the last like and it's i mean it's gonna feel clunky metal gear solid 4 does feel a little clunky and i think that's why they made the design decision to stop doing that but at the same time, like it's almost like playing classic Resident Evil or something. It's like it just has this like je ne sais quoi about it that you're like, I'm fucking playing Metal Gear. This is what Metal Gear feels like. Um, and I, th- I don't know. I, think I mean, Peace Walker has those menus too. Yeah, that's true. But I guess it's a little bit more streamlined, where it's like you only have like four options for weapons and stuff like that. Like it does the whole like portable ops route, where like your R2 and L2 triggers open up, like, a small menu as opposed to, like, everything? Uh, I mean, it's been so long since I played, I don't remember, to be completely honest. And I, 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 I've I, told you how I feel about Portable Ops and Portable Ops Plus. <sighs> yeah. I think uh, the other cool thing to mention here, so the codec is very different. Um, I mean, not necessarily an implementation, but it's different as far as, like, the layout of the screen. Um, I discovered you can wiggle around the right thumbstick to kind of change the camera up. Not change the camera, but move the camera on who you're talking to. Um, mm-hmm. But there weren't any, like, fun, like, R3 zooms in on the person or, like, click L- L3 to make Snake's thoughts uh, <laughs> be said out loud. Like, they, they, they kind of... Yeah, they got rid of all the weird shit from 2, and it's just kind of like a standard codec. Um but they also added some like ease of use stuff where it's easier to kind of call people once they're in your log. Um, I haven't gone through and discovered any like weird codec frequencies yet, but I didn't fuck with that. Um, the other big thing is the item viewer from MGS3 is back, which I really enjoyed because you can uh, they've like very lovingly textured and rendered all of the items in the game in like very high quality detail. So the first thing I did was like I went into the item viewer for the iPod that Snake has because Snake has an iPod. Um, and you can like rotate it and like look at the serial number on the back and it says it's a 30 gig iPod video and like, (laughs) it's very nice. It's like a nice white iPod. Um, but there's also like, uh, I think a Mac pro that, uh, Otacon has in the background of his codec calls and a couple like Apple branded monitors. Um, so there's a lot of Apple shit. There's a lot of product Mm -hmm. stuff in this just in general. Um, it's like official Playboy magazines, which, which you can flip through in first person. Well, 2008 um, was like the the big like boom for Apple products, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. It was like right around the time that the iPod was like super, super fucking popular. I remember that's around the time um, I got my iPod, yeah. Yeah, I want to say it's like the Demon Days, like Feel Good Inc. Uh, iPod box was like the box. That oh, yeah. For their iPod. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and like a uh, fun fact too, just so we can touch on it while we're talking about it. Um, there's different songs on the iPod. I think it comes preloaded with a couple different game songs from Metal Gear Acid 2 and Metal Gear Solid 
three. Um, it also has some cool podcasts on it, which we talked about last episode. But the big thing is um, you can listen to music to replenish Snake's psyche. Um, I didn't do it. If you equip it, it's funny. Snake's got like his little Apple earbuds in uh, while he's running around. Um, but I am actually refraining from equipping it because while you have it equipped, it's actually really fucking hard to hear what's going on around you. I was about to ask um, that because I never tried that. Yeah, it's if you've got the music playing, it's really hard to hear like footsteps and and like people around you. Um, so I tend to not use it, but I think it's a fun trick. Uh, I think like speedrunners use it where they like get to certain points where they know there aren't going to be any enemies, and if you equip it, you can replenish your psyche while you're kind of waiting or whatever. How quick? How quick does that replenish? I had no idea. That's kind of cool. That it does yeah, that. It, it's not by a lot. I think it's small. I think some songs might speed it up, and we'll talk about some of the secret songs. But there's some really cool, like Metal Gear Two, and like Metal Gear One, and like MGS One songs and stuff hidden in the game. Um, but yeah, so um, you crawl out of this little like training zone we we just touched on, where it's like two trucks kind of back to back, kind of blocking the the alley, so that you can kind of play around. Um, underneath one of the trucks is a ration, um, but if you crawl out from your little training zone, it'll trigger a cutscene where we see the PMCs fucking slaying some militia guys. Um, so the guys you rode in with are the militia, which I'm going to assume, and maybe Zach, I, I'm assuming that you might have a little bit more information than we do, but I'm assuming that the militia guys we rode in with, based on the way that they're dressed, that they're like locals. I would assume that they're like natives to this area. Um, that's what it makes, I mean, I actually didn't do any research to see if they even say what country they're in, um, but yeah, they are dressed very similar to how, like, the Taliban and the Mujahideen and, uh, like, AQAP would, uh, dress in Iraq, and, um, so I'm not, but I'm also not sure because they all have, like, standard, like, non-accents in American voices. <laughs> uh, yeah, everybody does. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Um, yeah, it's but, weird. but yeah, it would seem like those are local nationals that you wrote in and, you know the quote-unquote bad guys, according to this game, are the guys who are just trying to make a buck doing PMC work. Yeah, and you see them, like, all decked out in, like, fucking, like, state-of-the-art military gear. Essentially, it's the dudes, if um, if you went back on the last episode and uh, you watched along with the YouTube video version of the show, um, we, we cut in some footage from TGS, Tokyo Game Show, um, from 2006, and essentially the PMC guys that you see, like, tapping each other on the shoulder, and whenever it's doing the whole first-person shooter kind of psych-out, um, those are the guys that are, are like, slaughtering the militiamen. Um, but in this instance, there's like a dude up on a, there's a bunch of guys up on rooftops and they're just like straight sniping people and like fucking wrecking shop. Um, and then we do this like really fucking cool seamless shift into gameplay where it goes straight from cutscene into gameplay and oh my God, is this game obsessed with doing that? Um, they will do it a lot. Like it makes Uncharted look quaint in the way that this game does it. <laughs> um, but they do it a lot. Um, Snake gets an AK, which is pretty sweet, so if you want to go on like a full lethal run and just fucking go nuts... It's, uh, go that's the part where he like sticks his knife under it, right? Um, that's coming up in a little bit. Um, oh, that's I right, because it's the one that jams right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the one where you can use it, but it'll jam up. Um, but likewise, you do have it in your inventory, so once you do kind of have access to that, you can kind of go nuts. <laughs> um, there's some cool, uh, they do this cool thing, which I kind of wish that they would do more often. We'll see it a lot in five. Um, but where you hear Otacon on the codec talk to you while you're playing and they mm. won't, they won't do it frequently in this game, but they'll do it from time to time. And I actually kind of dig it because it'll let you play while you're listening to the conversation. It makes it feel a lot um, more organic than like, you know, if you are in the middle of a firefight and you got a call and it stops, you know? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Where it's like, hey, everybody, hold on real quick. I gotta take this call. <laughs> guys, guys, time out, time out. <laughs> Shut up, I can't hear him. All the PMCs are like, oh, okay, dude, do your thing, do your thing. Yeah, but then we hear this ominous... And then, metal Gear Cow. Yeah, and then everybody like shits their pants, and these Metal <laughs> Gears show up and just start literally stomping on human beings to death. It's a, it's a pretty um, gory like, scene, creepy, too. Like, organic legs. Yeah, it's insane. And they shit, and they actually shit. Yeah, and they moo. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, so I was uh, fun fact. I was eating pizza while I was playing, so I got to pause it pretty much like right away after Metal Gear showed up because I was like, I gotta eat my pizza. Um, <laughs> and, uh, in, 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 in doing so, um, I realized that there's a map on the pause screen that's really cool. It'll like show you mm-hmm. where you need mm-hmm. to go, and like it has a lot of indicators as to like where you can and can't go, and like why something should be of interest and why it shouldn't. So it's pretty neat. Um, it's pretty seamless, so you don't have to like dig through menus. It's just there. Um, but yeah, we're opened up into this really cool sort of hide and seek with the geckos. Um, I thought it was really dynamic. Um, I think I'm sure that it's not as intense, but with the music ramping up and the metal gears, just like fucking people up all around you, it felt very fast paced and like breakneck. And I just remember in the moment being like, Oh shit, I got to go. So like, I didn't spend a lot of time searching around here. I was just like, I got to book it. I'm going to get murdered. Um, Mm -hmm. how, how was you guys' experience? Well, the, yeah. I, I, well. <laughs> <laughs> everyone at once now <laughs> and together <laughs> mine was pretty much the same i i like i didn't have pizza but uh, i <laughs> definitely freaked out whenever the metal gears were um flying around and destroying people um but i really liked the uh the target on the map and it kind of kind of coddles you in the direction that you need to go and it's a lot more um i don't want to say easier but it's just you know helpful helpful yes thank you i think with Um, how big the environments got they kind of had to do that or else people would probably get stuck because i think unlike a game like portal or like assassin's creed where they use the color to kind of show you where to go i know mirror's edge does it a lot as well where it's like, hey, let the colors guide you visually to where you need to go. Um, I think with this game, they tried really hard to render everything as it would look in reality. Mm -hmm. Um, So you see a lot less, like, color gating and being like, go to the white thing, or like, hey, the red lines, follow the red lines. Um, They just tried to make it look like a little, like, Middle Eastern town. Um, So I think without the map, you might get lost. Yeah. I did get spotted a lot, which was annoying, and I was like, ah, this sucks. But in this little section, I was able to find a lot of hiding spots. So that was... Oh, my God. Hiding from those things are fucking intense because I didn't get <laughs> caught, but I ran up into the top of a building to kind of, like, get around them, and I thought one of them saw me, and, I like, I hit up on the wall, and I only had, like, enough space there for Snake to hide. Like, it was wall snake and then end of wall oh, no. <laughs> and the fucking gecko <laughs> climbs up into the, the window and like looking that's, just, that's what they're called yeah it's like g-e-k-k-o i think oh yeah. irving but it like does this like weird like rotates its fucking legs up and like looks into the window yeah that happened and to me. Like looking back and forth yeah and i was i was like no god no leave go away and it stood there for, for a very long time before it finally left and oh it did leave it. so i was playing and kristen was next to me and for some reason every time i play games around kristen i feel like i have to like keep it going as much as possible <laughs> or else she's gonna the lose macho interest. man and so I was yeah, like, no, it leaves after a little bit. Yeah, I was like, oh, shit. So, like, it was sitting there, and I was like, oh, no, I got to go. Got to go fast. And I just, like, ran and, like, somersaulted over the Metal Gear <laughs> and just, like, booked it. And I could hear it turn around and chase me. And I was like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Way to go, Sonic. Yeah. So. But, yeah, so then we get to this part where uh, you, you kind of go into this little, like, passageway alleyway, and then it cuts to a cut scene. Um, and Snake, good old Snake, and I'm going to go ahead and put this out there, Snake smokes a whole lot more in this game than he has in any other game. Um, I don't know if it's because they now have, like, the technology to, like, render the smoke and, like, show it off in a cool way, so they're trying to do it. Um, but I've just noticed, like, between the install screens and, like, the number of times we've seen Snake smoke just in the beginning of this game, um, I think that's more on-screen smoking than we've ever seen uh, with Snake. Uh, it makes me feel um, young. <laughs> Yeah, and so I part of me wonders if Snake's just being like a nihilist, and he's like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna die anyway. Let me just chain smoke my way out of here." Um, <laughs> but he uh, lights a cigarette, smokes like half of it, puts it in his little like container, um, and then uh, he kind of makes his way through into this little area where it's kind of like a riff on on the uh, Tokyo Game Show gameplay demo, where in that I think in that video we got to see the Octo camo and like Snake hide 
uh, in a box. But here we see the box. If you look carefully, it says no place for Hideo, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Um, and Snake successfully hides from a, a couple Metal Gears. Um, the way that it makes you think is that Snake's been stomped on, um, but if you look closely in the top uh, corner, uh, you can press L1, and if you press L1, you can see it from like Snake's point of view, um, so, mm-hmm. so you know that the Metal Gears are just stomping on a box filled with watermelons. Um, but one of the watermelons like rolls up to Snake, and we see it like cascade on his Octo Camo, which is cool, and he loses his militia garb and like a too cool for school kind of way um <laughs> but yeah and then snake jumps down and and this is the part where zach was talking about where snake checks the fallen weapon for a trap um mm. and he takes his knife and like kind of digs it in the ground around the weapon to make sure that it's not booby trapped so because they do that yup so then we kind of get uh thrown into a blast from the past i thought it was actually a very smart move on uh Kojima Productions, which is notorious for lots of exposition, actually chose to start this game with a bang and then take us on a flashback. Um, so I feel like they were kind of pressured to make you play in this like really cool environment right away just to show off the hardware. Mm. Um, but then we flash back, and uh, Snake is in the what appears to be the graveyard from the end of Metal Gear Solid 3, which I think is is that Arlington Memorial Cemetery? It is. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so Snake's at, in Arlington. Um this may be a spoiler for later, so don't answer this question if you know the answer, but who the fuck is Snake visiting? He can't be visiting the boss because he doesn't know who she is. No, that that is who he's visiting. Okay. I'm trying to remember. Does it explain why that's who he's visiting? Because I don't know why he would know I who that is. I don't remember if they do explain it explicitly or not, but it because that plays into later events as well. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, that's just essentially what's going to happen here. Um, there's a cool little like press X if you look in the top corner. Um, there's like a pre- if you press X, it'll like flash between shit from MGS3 of Big Boss uh, saluting uh, while Snake's at the grave. Um, and then we get this helicopter shows up uh, just in the middle of the cemetery because nobody gives a shit. <laughs> Even the dead have ears. Yeah, and uh, out of the helicopter comes uh, Otacon, and we get to see like a really cool rendered PS3 Otacon. Um, and essentially, uh, it's, it's, it's nice. Uh, well, it's nice to see Otacon like not with pixel face and like <laughs> solid white glasses in real form. Yeah, so we get to see oh, man. real this boy. This is final form. Final form Otacon. Yeah. So it's nice. Uh, it's nice to hear the original voice actors again. Um, I got a real rush because we didn't hear Otacon at all in three. So it was nice to be like, oh, the boys are back. Um, and Otacon and Snake kind of have this, like, quick aside about, like, Snake's uh, arteries uh, kind of hardening and his, like, skin changing and how they kind of allude to the fact that they've been trying to figure it out, but they don't know why. And Otacon talks about how he's, like, sent samples off to, like, a lot of uh, highly skilled uh, scientists to try and figure out what the fuck's going on. And uh, they pretty much allude to the fact that between Snake being a clone and the fox die and a couple other things, that it could be a number of things and that no one's going to know what the hell they're looking at if they diagnose him. Um, so Snake's kind of given up, and he's like, how, how long do I have left to live is kind of his mentality, while Otacon tends to be like the more hopeful kind of saying. Like, I don't know, just in the way that he says what he says, you can tell Otacon's like kind of holding out hope. Um, and they talk about how they're trying to find Naomi because Naomi might be the only one who knows what to do, but nobody can find her. Hmm. And so uh, uh, Snake and Otacon go back to the helicopter, and good old Roy's back, and he's real. Um, <laughs> Actual Roy Campbell. PS3. Ge- <laughs> well, he's not only like PS3 rendered Roy Campbell. He's not just. He's not just a picture. He's a person. Well, not He's not only, a paper boy. Not only is so we saw a rendering of Roy Campbell in MGS One in the submarine. Oh um, yeah, I remember that. seeing. Yeah, not only are we seeing like a rendering of Roy in real life, but we also this is the first time I'm we've seen Roy, Roy since fucking <laughs> 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 since GW. This is the first time we've seen Roy Campbell, and so it's weird. At least it was to me, and I was trying to think of this from the perspective of fans coming like hot off the heels of MGS Two and MGS Three. It's weird that Snake and Roy don't say shit about like, oh, that weird thing that happened in New York a couple years ago, <laughs> um, and they don't really talk about any of that. And so we're just taking at face value like this is Roy Campbell, and we don't know what the fuck happened with GW. Um, well, not only so, that, but there's really no mention of the fact that like most of Lower Manhattan was wiped out when Arsenal Gear fucking crashed into New York. 
Yeah, yeah. They don't. Talk, they don't talk about. It. I mean, now, granted, there's been a lot of time that's passed. Not a lot, but like. I was gonna say five years oh, is very long. That's true. <laughs> well, I guess if you think about they've it, they've probably talked about it. In yeah, XF I was gonna say if you think already. about it like diegetically, like they've had that conversation. So like, why have it have it again? But at the same time, it's like we're the audience. Like, yeah, exactly. Please. Like, where's the fan service? Yeah. Have that for our. Oh, benefit. there'll be plenty. This ga- well, this game yeah. is nothing if not fan service. Yeah, but the, the one, the just one point, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Like the one point where we need explanations, like nobody's given them. So, but yeah, so they talk about essentially Roy loosely alludes to the fact that he's found liquid um, with, I don't think he even says it, but if you press X during the little flashbacks, Mm. um, you can see that they're showing you pictures of liquid and Roy's like, we found him. You need to stop him. He's in the Middle East. Um, And so we kind of get the context for why we're in the Middle East. Um, I thought this game felt very much so like a direct sequel to one in this moment like it feels like with how much of an emphasis they put on snake and liquid um and roy being there and otacon being there like this feels like instead of picking up where two leaves off it almost feels like a direct sequel to one a little bit um at least right now i'm very soon it will feel like a direct sequel to two um oh very soon yeah very soon so and then we get this weird kind of in, interstitial cut, which will happen throughout the game a couple of times. So we see this like overhead shot of a frying pan and some eggs, um, and it looks very beautiful. I am led to believe that I think this is pre-rendered. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was live action. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like it looks too good to be in game. So I think, like, most Metal Gear games don't pre-render cutscenes, but I feel like this might be an instance where they did, just for the fidelity. Um, but anyway, so we hear somebody singing, and uh, just for those of you who are familiar with the game, it's a character named Sonny. I'm not going to tell you anything about that character right now, um, as we will learn as we continue. Um, but So Sonny is singing, and she's singing some numbers, and I did some research to figure out what the fuck this is. I think it's the Fibonacci sequence, which, if I remember, it's either the Fibonacci sequence or it's prime numbers i think she changes uh because we'll see this interstitial a couple times for those of Um, us who are not mathematically inclined what the hell is the fibonacci sequence (laughs) so the fibonacci is a type of pasta (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Um, (laughs) the fibonacci sequence is essentially uh if i remember correctly it's a sequence of numbers that and I, I don't know if they're prime numbers or not but it's a sequence of numbers where all of the past numbers add up to the rest of the numbers in the sequence so it's like you start out with like two digits and then they add up to bring you the third digit and then the third digit and the fourth digit equal out the fifth digit and it just goes on yeah. and on and on. Yikes. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. like one, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, Good job, Eddie. Nine, I'm going to give you some sunny side eggs for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she's, uh, she's just doing this from memory. So from the context clues, we can tell, A, uh, it sounds like a very young person. B, it sounds like this person has some sort of fucking insane memory or, like, mental capabilities. Um, and so we will kind of return to this. But um, right after this, it does the really cool, and it'll do this for every act, like some rain and, like, a woman being like, <laughs> and then like some lightning and then it'll be like act one liquid sun um so yeah and then we go back to kind of the present day <laughs> <laughs> now, now i want to see a That's super hilarious. cut of metal gear solid 4 but it's all done all the vocals are done by alessio yeah <laughs> cue it here <laughs> damn it so now i'm gonna have to do something there i'll probably just i'm gonna edit in the dexter uh if you've ever seen the the serial killer tv show no but i'm curious to see what the sound is now <laughs> yeah so anyway <laughs> oh that hit me right there hit me right in a good spot so <laughs> we're introduced to the red zone so this is Red Zone Northwest Sector, um, and it, it this is very, um, so in a weird way, they introduced you to, like, the crazy, like, shit hitting the fan scenario, and now they're kind of hitting you with, like, the typical scenario that you're going to be encountering for the rest of the game. However, there will be, like, shit hitting the fan war zone battlefield scenarios sprinkled throughout. So 
these sort of sections where like people don't know snakes that they are yet um, is going to make up most of the gameplay because obviously it has to be a stealth game. Um, so this is kind of the typical thing. And so we're kind of opened up and we're here. There's a dude knocked out next. There's a dude dead next to us, a militia member. There's a dumpster. I tried for a very long time to put his body into the dumpster. And then I realized <laughs> that you just couldn't do that. And I was like, all right, fuck it. Um, but you can go backwards and you can pick up some rations. And I think there's also some ammo for the AK. Um, and yeah, and you can also shake some rations out of the bodies because there's two dudes if you double back. But if you continue on, you'll see like a praying mantis PMC poster um, and some other cool shit. There's like everything's really highly rendered, so it looks really nice. So you can pretty much read all the text and all the flyers. Um, but you're kind of like open up into this like roadway where you see. Um, kind of like it's cool all of the squads are behaving as like a regular squad would but in pairs as opposed to like with like a group of four or something I guess to kind of even the odds fire teams um, but there's yeah, yeah yeah so they're like little fire teams um, <laughs> and we see like two dudes kind of doing a sweep down the road and if you're smart like I tried to be um, you just duck into the building right away um, I have played before where I've like gone prone and just like tried to keep pace with the fire team and like stay hidden in the cars um, but it's kind of a fucking nightmare um, and I'm sure there's a bunch of cool hidden goodies in this space but I I was trying to play sneaky as opposed to uh, exploratory I guess for lack of a better word um, but I, and I don't know if you guys discovered this. I showed Kristen, and much to her uh, chagrin, this was her favorite part of the game. If you lay prone and you like lightly hold on the analog stick to <laughs> sneak, oh my God. Um, snake will fucking little, like snake. Little, like he'll like wiggle. He'll do like a little old man hump. Yeah, he does like a little old man like pelvic hump where he just like real sneaky snake kind of crawls, and it's great. It's really good. Um, but yeah, so, so such an that's, inconvenient way to move around. <laughs> Yeah, and right before this, <laughs> right before this too, we're given our goal. So, um, and I'll definitely, I definitely want to ask you guys kind of how you tackled this. But the goal that we were given from Otacon was, um, he was saying that he's got like a cool little like Metal Gear sidekick that he worked on, and him and Snake talk about the Mark II. Um, and little roller gear. Yeah, a little roller gear. And uh, Otacon tells you you need to go get the Mark II to kind of progress because it's going to help you out. Um, so that's kind of your mission. So if you pause it and you look at the map that's where the marker is taking you so that's what we need to be doing um how did you guys fare in red zone northwest sector do you guys have a good time was it hard <laughs> did the guy that you let watched die a lot zach how did, it, how did it work out uh well actually well, let me oh go ahead sam i was gonna say let me tell you a little bit about red zone northwest <laughs> all right so i was actually doing really good i was using the buildings and snaking around for cover <laughs> um and uh I was doing pretty good, and I was hiding behind a wall, if I thought I was hiding, and somebody saw me, and I went into alert mode, and um, everybody started freaking out, so I dipped down into a hole, like, to crawl away, and I was going to hide, and something different in this one is that they crouch down to shoot at you, and throw grenades at you if you go into the hole, so, like, you crawl into a hole in front of them, so... The guards are immediately, if you get caught and you aren't prepared, they're immediately more dynamic than they'd ever been. But I took care of them and proceeded to snick, snack my way to the building. <laughs> snick. No step on Isaac, snick. How was it? Yeah. For me, not too bad, actually. I didn't die in this little area. Red Zone treated me well. I did get alerted, or I got caught quite a lot, um, but it was not too bad. It was pretty cool, trying to get used to everything. Um, so there's my little not so exciting <laughs> rundown. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We didn't uh, we didn't talk about it much in the generalities, but um, both the octocam and the radar um, are kind of triggered by waiting, which I thought was kind of cool. So if you like press up against the surface, which no longer do you just walk up to it to press up against it, you actually have to like press triangle. Um, but if you press up against the surface or lay down <laughs> flat and just wait for a second, the octo camo will kick in and it'll like, and it'll even show you there's like a dynamic like camo index up in the top right, like it was for Metal Gear Solid 3. 
Um, but you can uh, both, so darkness affects it and it will actually adjust the number. I think it turns red and gives you like a boost if you're in the dark. Um, but if you lay flat on a surface and then change to that surface, you can see how it affects the camo like right away, which is super cool. Um, and if you want it to go away, if you just stay still and not touch anything, it'll just go back to the normal color. Um, likewise, too, while you're standing still, it will automatically pull up this really cool Zone of the Enders style, like circular radar. Um, so there's a circle that kind of surrounds Snake, and then the circle will have these kind of like peaks and valleys based on if there's movement happening in that direction mm-hmm. um, and the closer that is the higher the arc is yeah it's pretty which neat. is pretty neat yeah eh. huh. Woo. jinx huh. you owe me a coke yeah um i got you just, one right here <laughs> just for the sake of including it you can pick up some uh arsenal compresses or compress arsenal compress um essentially it's uh I'd say it's like a muscle relaxer or something, it seems like. Um, and For it's made to, I think it boosts your psyche, but it also like helps Snake not hurt. <laughs> um, yeah, because if, if he stays crouched, because you can um, crouch walk to move around a little bit slower and a little bit sneakier. But if he stays in that position for too long, he like complains and groans and grabs his back like an old man. And it's Ugh, great. I'm getting yeah. too old for this shit. <laughs> yeah um so it's super neat um the shit part is that it's really hard to spot items from a distance anymore um at least right now um when we get the sort of eye patch thing later it'll make it a little easier um but as it stands right now like none of the items float off the ground like they do in the other metal gear games Mm. um so you kind of have to like i don't know they kind of blend into the scenery a little bit more so there were quite a few times while i was playing this part of the game where i would like accidentally just pick shit up and like not even know about it a lot of brown items in a very brown area yeah oh and much like you can item view everything so much like the ipod that we just talked about you can look at the arsenal uh compress and it has arsenal gear on the box um which is kind of <laughs> well, arsenal neat. compress arsenal compress was you found those in arsenal gear mill you're solid too oh that's right i forgot about that um so yeah but you see there's like an arsenal on the box uh which is neat so i guess that means that somebody's manufacturing this shit and that they know about arsenal gear which i thought is kind of weird that or someone um, looted it after a hit manhattan and now you know the war economy <laughs> yeah. Um, the other fun thing is you can look at other things. So you can even look at snakes, uh, smokes in the item viewer, and they're just called boss cigarettes, which I think is really cool. Um, but the whole pack <laughs> is, is, there, is there, yeah, she cigarettes. Ugh. Ugh. Tastes like they're sand moist. and shame. Uh, <laughs> it tastes like Ugh. a sad father. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, so there's boss oh cigarettes. They very clearly look like Marlboro Reds, um, and it says like filtered 20 pack and if you look you can read all the text and stuff on it which is neat you can even see like how many smokes are in the pack i don't know if it changes but there's like a little like you can see there have been some of them taken out and stuff and you can kind of look at the detail super cool it even glistens with the like light in the item viewer so you can kind of look at the like shimmery plastic packaging so yeah it's pretty neat um the one thing i wanted to bring up to you guys is uh when you crawl through the little vent if you go through the building there's a dude who just gets like it didn't trigger for me so I had to reset this part twice because I did like Sam said I got spotted where I didn't think I should have I was like what the fuck like somebody just saw me and I was like okay so I had to reset Um, but whenever I reset uh, it just didn't trigger the dude who gets tripped and shot um, which I thought was weird Um, but there's a guy when you're crawling through the vent right after you get the compress, um, there's like a little, like a destroyed part of the building that you crawl through. There's a guy who gets like tripped and then he's like begging for his life. And then he just gets fucking murdered by this PMC guy. Um, (laughs) however, the PMC guy, like how many fucking bullets does it take to kill somebody in this world? Like the PMC guy (laughs) shoots him in the head like 10 times and the guy's still moving through like Ooh. most of it like the guy's moving up until like shot 10 i was like oh my Nano god machines. good lord yeah yeah so it's pretty intense um likewise too and i don't know if you guys noticed this or if it came on during the playthrough um zach i don't know is it typical for a pmc to just like uh through loudspeakers play really creepy music and then have an advertisement of a woman being like Praying Mantis PMC group is here to protect. I, you. I like, actually it was, like super creepy. I started laughing during that point because that it um that is a thing that PMCs will do and also that the military will do called what used to be called psychological psychological operations. Um, so it is real. It is real. Uh, like uh, 
Remember in Apocalypse Now when they start blasting Ride of the Valkyries on their, uh, oh, and and yeah. the Colonel's like, yeah, I love this song. It scares the shit out of them. It's it's essentially like that. It's it's sort of you know like letting them you know what the, what Praying Mantis is doing is like you know even though they've got the ice cream music, and uh, and the ladies <laughs> like sounds real cheery. It's sort of like yeah, we're in your home. We're coming for you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, it, remind, it reminds me a so lot. It's inherently of, ominous. Now that I think about it, it reminds me a lot of a film called Generation Kill. I don't know if you guys have seen yep. it. It's a documentary. Um, but there's a guy in that film uh, who they follow who, like, fucking blasts, like, heavy metal and, like, crazy electronic music mm. whenever they my, like, uh, do their do their shit. My buddies, a few of my buddies who have gone to Iraq and Afghanistan, they would do similar stuff to, like that. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, All I can say is in that moment when the music played and the cheerful woman started talking, within minutes of playing this game, I was immediately unnerved and creeped out. And I think <laughs> Kojima Productions... Kojima Productions, what took them three games of people constantly saying, war is bad, war is bad, like it took in three minutes of Metal Gear Solid 4 for me to go, this is creepy as fuck <laughs> and not what people were meant to do to each other. <laughs> like, that, that, right out the gate. Yeah. I was like, you just, you sold me. You don't have to tell me anymore, Kojima. That, like, that, <laughs> well, that's what, happens, that's what happens when you actually go to the battlefield. That, that means yeah. that the psychological <laughs> operations worked on you, Alessio. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, because I was like, guys, I'm, I just want to go home. Like, <laughs> but yeah, so, and like I mentioned, the, like where I got spotted was like in this little section with the market. Um, so I essentially, it fucking sucked. So I didn't do my save scumming yet. So when I got spotted here, I literally had to fucking start a new game. Oh, to, uh, like back to the back to the part where it like well, it did prompt me to save like a little bit before this, but I pretty much had to go back like a good chunk before this. Um, I don't know. It was weird for whatever reason. I like had to Google. I was like, oh, if I get spotted, can I just press a button and restart from a checkpoint? And then I was like, it's fucking Metal Gear. Like, why would that ever be the case? What am I doing? Um, so I had to start over. I guess I was too used to five, or five you can literally just say restart from checkpoint in the menu. Um, but yeah, so that was a thing. Um, real fun though, I got to watch Snake die um, because I wanted to like just die to trigger the return to title menu. Um, and when Snake dies, he totally becomes a fucking rag doll. He just becomes this like real weird old man <laughs> rag doll. Um, cause I got like shot, I got surrounded by a bunch of dudes. Cause there's, so there's like a little, um, Zach, what do you call it? It's like a street sweeper or something. There's like a thing that pulls up, like a troop transport with a gun on top. Oh, um, uh, was it? Did it have four wheels or like eight? I think it's got like treads. No, maybe it had wheels. I can't remember. Anyway, there's like a troop transport that pulls yeah. up. There's like a gun on top, and some dudes get out. Oh, and that's where I got uh, striker. Spotted. Yeah, yeah, that's where I got spotted the second time. And like, I just remember. And I guess playing on normal, like, you really do have a good chunk of health because I had the rations equipped, and I only had, like, two or three, and I was able to fucking, like, stand there and get shot, stabbed, and shot at with a truck. <laughs> and, like, it still took, like, a minute and a half for me to die. Some PMC is, like, uh, the PMC commander's huddled in the back of his truck, like, he's not going down! <laughs> But yeah, so Snake just like ragdolled out and did some sick like GTA 4 like tripping animation. Oh, nice. Um, it looked very disgusting. I felt bad for him. Um, <laughs> but when you die, it was cool. It shows off a whole bunch of cool flashback stuff. And Otacon's just like, Snake! And you see like not only uh, snippets from the game, but also like parts of the like MGS3 flashbacks and all that other shit. So it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um do you guys want to add anything else before we move into the next part of the red zone? Um, are we about to talk about Mark II and that stuff real quick? Or uh, That's in the second part of the red zone. So you go through okay. like a cool. little door. So like as soon as that striker pulls up, if you wait patiently, which is what I ended up doing, all the dudes kind of walk off. Um, and I will say, man, like this game makes it way more tense to be stealthy. Like it feels like mm -hmm. everybody's trying to get you. Um, but what's cool is like they're still fighting some militia people here. So if you just wait patiently, some militia guys will just like pop up, and the PMCs will obviously be like well, the dudes with guns because like they don't know that you're there. <laughs> um, so they'll go after mm -hmm. the other guys with the guns, and so you can take advantage of like when the militia shows up to wreck shop and the PMCs like mow them down. <laughs> uh, you can take advantage of that and just like book it for the door, which is what I did. Um, and then you, you were like getting way too much joy out of these militias getting mowed down. <laughs> <Zach>. <laughs> I. I you know, 
<laughs> you can, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, no. Yes. I tip my camo colored hat to you, sir. Talk to y'all. Um, I'll talk to you offline about that, Sam. Okay. okay. <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, so we get to the second part of the red zone. Uh, not the red stripe, not the bone zone, but the red zone. There's a lot of verticality as soon as you walk through the door. The load time is actually pretty quick, but I guess that's what the 16-minute install was for. Um, you walk into the red zone, immediately in front of you, there's some statues and my favorite fucking joke bit from this entire game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you can head up the staircase and keep going, or if you uh, go up to the statues, you can interact with the statues, and Snake will stand where the fallen statue is. Because there's like, th- so there's three men, like three statue men on a platform, and one of them has been like blown off. Um, and you can stand where that blown off one was and snakes octo camo will make him look like a statue. Um, and snake will put his hand over his face to like cover his non camoed part of his body. And, but then he also puts his right hand on the, like the cock of the statue, <laughs> um, to like hide the dude's dick. And, oh my uh, gosh. <laughs> if you do it long enough, snake will accidentally break the dick off in his hand and get like <laughs> upset about it. Oh, I didn't know that. that well, it decreases his psyche. I don't know if it decreases his psyche, but it's super cool. So you can like stand there while the guard, like I literally had the guards like walking right in front of me and they didn't see me. And then as soon as they walked past and I like was holding it for a little bit longer, snake just like broke the dick off in his hand. And I was just like, oh, I totally forgot that part was in the. Well, I, I remember it's too I bad. Remember that image too bad was in that the, dick uh, is ID tagged. Yeah, <laughs> I remember <laughs> that, that image was like one of like the big like, like hey, look what we can do with this game, and it was him sort of like, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, real solid. Oh. This will be the sequel. But yeah. <laughs> but there's uh, so I want some more. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part Delicious. where um. I'll kind of explain how to get to where we need to get to, and then I'm curious to talk to you guys about how you did, because this this zone, more so than the last red zone, this section, the second section of the red zone is a way more vertical, and way more open, and there's a lot more shit going on. So you can choose to, because like where the statues are, there's like a stairwell, um, and there's also, because we're dealing with a lot of like blown out buildings and stuff, and like kind of ruined courtyards, but you can... Um, Go up the staircase is kind of the easy mode because you're above everything. But if you kind of go down from where the statues are, you're kind of in the thick of it. And uh, it's a little bit more tense because there's like moving patrols and there's people up above. And it's a little harder to get around. But I knew that I was trying to not alert anybody. So I went up the staircase. Um, I think there's just like one dude. And so I just like stun knifed him and kind of kept going. And so you can kind of avoid the others seeing you if you crawl. And you kind of have to like cart, not cartwheel, but like... uh, what the fuck is it called? Somersault over Somersault. Like some, some breaks in the path. And you kind of keep going, and then there's like a little hole in the wall of a building after you kind of continue down, and you can kind of f- flip through into the building, and that's where it triggers kind of the Mark II cutscene. Um, but how did you guys fare with this like big open space before you got to the Mark II? Yeah, I did the exact same thing you did, actually. <laughs> oh, very nice. Yeah, this Isaac. is going to be boring. I, um, you I did the same. <laughs> Oh, very nice. So I went we up took top. The high road. Yeah, I like the idea of old snake trying to do like a, a cartwheel and just completely just eating <laughs> <some> shit. <laughs> oh damn it! I mean, you can <laughs> like if you try if you try and cartwheel up the stairs, he'll just smash his face <laughs> into the stairs. My God! <laughs> that, I mean, I feel like that, that's been in every game. That would always make me giggle in Metal Gear Solid Two when I was a kid playing it. Just make him smash his face over and over. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> what? Expose that bright red booty. Oh All my right. god! Mm. Sorry. Um, so yeah, snake booty's back. We didn't talk about that. Uh, I will say, in the middle of the first cutscene in this area, Kristen just went, "Oh man, look at that butt!" <laughs> <laughs> and I was just yeah. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> He's ninety years old. <laughs> <laughs> He's still packing, man. He's got those two fucking like honey honey baked hams in his in his back pocket. My arteries aren't the only thing that's tight. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh no! But yeah, so we get, we get this cool cutscene where uh, Snake's got to be a sweet badass. Too bad he's still a dad, and he lights a cigarette on like some like burned out building. Um, cause I guess he just didn't pack a lighter. 
Is that coming Snake's to question? Snake's a fucking edge lord. Yeah. Snake's uh, he's got some trip pants on underneath his suit if you pay attention, but yeah, he uh he just lights a cigarette on this like fallen building and then we get the little Metal Gear Mark II sneaks up on him and then Otacon is like on the screen and he's like, "Ha ha, I got you." Um, and they have this fun sort of exchange where the Mark II kind of hands Snake some goodies. Um, and I want to say there's a little bit of a Kodak call. It might be just woven into the cutscene. But so Snake's given his solid eye, the Metal Gear Mark II, an operator with a suppressor, and a Mark II pistol. And I believe the operator with a suppressor is the lethal pistol. It is. And the Mark mm-hmm. II is the non lethal pistol, which was my. And I believe it's just automatically suppressed. Mm-hmm. I think. Yep. And I can't remember if the suppressor on the Mark II degrades. I think it's built in. Not. I don't think so. Okay, cool. It's the only one that doesn't. It's like the easy gun, I guess. <laughs> um, I love, I loved this scene because. So, first of all, Mark II is really cool. Oh, Second yeah. of all, this is literally just the robot from Snatcher. Yeah. Third of all, when you do the when it rolls up, you can do the X to do the flashback prompt, mm-hmm. and because he said because he says Metal Gear, of course he mm-hmm. does, mm-hmm. and. <laughs> It'll flash back to images of Rex, and the very last image is the robot from Snatcher. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, you see huh. like, those fucking Snatcher screenshot. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and likewise, too, so you can equip the solid eye, which is essentially what David Hayter was wearing at the beginning, um, and it's oh. what Snake's wearing, I believe, in all of the promotional art. Um, but it's just this eye patch, so in a way to make Snake look more like Big Boss, but also add like functionality to his regimen um he now has this eye patch that he can use to like scan surroundings and like um i think you can mark targets to some extent or i think they just kind of show up like through the through the like if you're close proximity you can kind of see outlines of people um and you can use this to get information on shit but you can also use it to spot items i believe there's a uh, night vision mode built into it um it's like all your scopes built into one yeah so they did that three modes but they could have the done binocular, that with the, cards. the. But go ahead, Isaac. The key cards. Oh, oh I was, okay. Sorry. I don't go know ahead. where we're going. <laughs> there are three modes: the binoculars, the night vision, and the um, normal, regular mode. I guess, which just outlines things in normal view. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's super cool though. Um, and also, if you equip the Mark II and you can play around with them, um, if you notice, so you can take the Mark II and like drive it up to snake and look at snake and snake's totally using a fucking playstation 3 controller to control Mm -hmm. the mark 2 um and i think otacon even name drops that it uses a six cell processor which is the same processor in the playstation 3 um Mm -hmm. so ha 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 um which god damn it if that mark 2 is using the same processor why the fuck does my ps3 not electrocute people (laughs) on Command. also how because what the fuck also how is that thing stealthy because if you leave a ps3 on for more than like 10 hours that thing starts screaming yeah, <laughs> exactly it does it very yeah. much does <laughs> once it's like like sam alluded to you can actually like shock people with the mark ii um <laughs> and you can use it to kind of like scope out uh territory and stuff like that which is pretty neat um i think people can spot it and shoot at it so just be weary yeah. i don't know what that does as far as like when you can use it again um but, yeah, that's a thing. I actually didn't use the Mark II at all in my playthrough uh, so far. I just kind of... I knew it was there. I played around with it for a second, but I just didn't really pull it back out. Um, can it pick up items? Do you guys remember? Do you know if it can? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, you can't pick up items with it. But, yeah, so as soon as you walk out of this area, you're kind of in this big war zone. Um Again, it's PMCs and militia just kind of fighting each other, and they've got these sort of like embankments built up around this entrance, uh, which is going to be the entrance to the safe house, which is what we're going to go into here in a second. But there's like this big just fucking street brawl going on, um, and you can trank or kill people on either side. Um, If you do so, they will stay tranked or dead for the entirety of the fight. Um, I tried waking people up, and for some reason, I don't know if it was just for me or what, but I couldn't wake people up once I had tranked them in the middle of the fight. Um, I don't know if... I don't know if it's like a weird situation where like when X number of dudes on one side are gone, then like certain things get triggered from like a gameplay perspective. And so to make it easier, it's just like somebody's perma tranked. But in these war zone modes, um, whenever you're in these big brawls, um, anybody you trank just like stays tranked until the battle is over. Um, well, it's also a, a bunch of items. It's also a touch of realism. Yeah. Totally. It's a, it hits them with a horse tranquilizer. You're not going to be waking them up for a while. <laughs> yeah, no matter how many times you stand over them and shake them and go, hey, hey, yeah, wake up, hey. Um, and and so the thing about it is, though, one of the mistakes that you could that you can make in this section 
is doing bad things to the militia people. Yeah, and I've, I've heard that some people on this show right now did that. No one here. No one here did that. Um, but uh, this is that I did that later. But like oh, okay. the militia people are on your side and they won't shoot at you, um, and they're actively like assisting you. So don't turn your ire towards them because you will regret it. I almost wonder. Cool. I I don't know if it ever gets addressed, but I almost wonder if the militia were paid by Otacon and like the group to like give Snake safe passage, or if the militia like engaged the BMCs on purpose to like let Snake get to Liquid, who we're gonna ultimately kind of confront at the end of this act. Um, I mean, it could go. I don't know. I could, it could go either way, but I think that you know, me bringing the real life into it and, you know, sorry for being Debbie Downer, but a lot of those groups Oh, will... no, no, no. That's what. That's why we like your input. <laughs> you, you suck at video games, but you know the, the real Debbie stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but a lot, Tell me how a to lot, fight, Zach. <laughs> a lot of those groups will take whatever, whatever help they can get. So it's really like, you know, that's why a lot of them will try to recruit from Westerners and stuff like that. So if you, you know, you roll up on like an ISIS camp and you're like, hey, I'll help you guys. They're like, all right, you know, whatever. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, sure. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, sure, Dad. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, you can help the militia and you can help them deal with the PMC dudes, which is actually pretty sweet because if you do and you clear out the PMC guys, um, it actually kind of like everything will kind of calm down for a little bit. And you can kind of like interact with the militiamen and you can give them rations and they will give you shit. And I didn't realize oh, until really? I was consulting a guide. Yeah, I didn't realize until I was consulting a guide to see what all I had missed. That um, if you give rations to the PMC or the uh, militiamen, uh, some of them will give you songs, and I think you get up to like four songs for the iPod, like oh. in this area. Um, but they also, I think, they'll exchange like ammunition for rations and stuff like that, oh. um, which is pretty sweet. And likewise, too, if, if if you didn't, and I think on my first playthrough, I did accidentally fucking kill a militia guy. Um, if you kill a militia guy and then you go into the safe house, which we're about to go into, it becomes a fucking disaster. <laughs> yeah, a goddamn nightmare. That safe house is a mess. Like it becomes a scene from like The Departed. Oh my god, I can house. only imagine. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, so... I would never turn. I never turn on the militia because it was sort of nice having someone. You know, be like, yeah, you guys go ahead. I'm gonna go this way. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So I went, th- I went through. I managed to get to the safe house without fucking with anybody, but um, I wasn't sure what was going on in the safe house. <laughs> so I just kind of was like sneaking around, <laughs> and every so often, as you're going through, they'll start shouting at you, and they say that they'll say that they need backup up top, and then a bunch of guys will just run by, and I'm like, oh my god, hide. <laughs> and they give you like a very small amount of space to hide. Um, and I came up on a room that had dudes in it. Um, and this guy was just standing outside of the room and I didn't know what to do. So I tranquilized him. Oh boy. And then I got spotted and <laughs> tranquilizing the dude made them aggressive. Oh me. no. <laughs> no, no guys. Yeah. He's just you asleep. I swear. Yeah. So I just killed everybody. Oh which is... no. So. Those poor guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sam. I had the same yeah. experience, except Fuck yeah. I made that mistake a long time before that. <laughs> <laughs> so all the way up, pretty much from the very beginning, I had to fight both the militia and the PMCs. Ooh, and oh was, my god! Even though he was playing was like, on normal, he had the hard mode version. <laughs> yeah. It may it makes uh, the next segment segment way harder. Yeah. yeah. Like, way harder. Well, and I will say this, too, just for everybody who's, if you're playing along with the show and kind of trying to pace out with us, uh, don't fret. Um, we're not going to be in the same zone for every act, and every act has, like, a different PMC and, like, different natives and, like, locals. Um, yeah, so, so you have other chances to yeah, fuck up. Yeah, you have other chances, A, to fuck up, or B, to, like, pay retribution <laughs> for the innocence that you've destroyed. Receive, <laughs> receive penance for your... Take my rations, I'm sorry. Karma. Yeah. yeah, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you equip the solid eye while you're in the uh, safe house, you can find some really cool shit. There's like noodles that you can get, um, which will like kick in the whole like MGS3 food system, which is pretty cool. Um, there's uh, more rations. There's some RPG ammo, which ooh, maybe we'll get a uh, an RPG later. Um, and then there's a theme of Tara or Terra, uh, an iPod song that you can pick up. 
Um, and I think, I'm not sure, I think you can get a militia outfit in the safe house. Yeah, you can. I just had it in my inventory later. You find it in a I locker. Think I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's super helpful because if you wear the militia outfit, um, it'll help Snake blend in like even more. Um, so it makes things like way easier in the next few sections unless you're Sam. Um, Fuck you. I was <laughs> thinking about tranking some dudes and stealing their shit, but I got really scared. Even saying, though, so even though it is weird that yeah, like it's a good thing. Most you of the militia guys run around in, like regular pants and jackets with like some you know web stuff on, and then snakes run around like an old chic. You know, with his man jams on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Snakes walking like, around what with. What you say? His man his jams. Man jams. <laughs> snakes running around with like fucking cloaked <laughs> cigarettes and his like posh Dubai outfit, but with like a PMC grade tactical vest as well. Yeah, it's real weird. Oh, fucking yeah, God snakes God. looking like he's trying to be an assassin. It's a real man, term, but... Sam. It's man, man jams. jams. <laughs> his regular, his regular man jams. Oh, yep. Oh, that's right. So I Sam, forgot about the accent. S- Sam, I'm going to let you have the privilege to introduce the first man of color in, in this game and also introduce one of my favorite yeah. characters. Um, so, so in comes Drebin. Take it away. Yeah, Drebin. So you <laughs> so you, you make it through. My favorite um, section of the show, which is coloring in the dark with Samuel Wright. <laughs> this is racist. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, was trying to, I was trying to make a real, I was trying to make a bad joke. Man. You coloring. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so once you make it through the bunker, which is either without incident or with a lot of incident, depending on who you are. Yeah, no you're either here, you're either a but... fucking bull in a china mm. shop or you're like tiptoeing through a buddy's house. <laughs> um you get to this like clearing, there's this giant truck and this fucking weird ass skin monkey shows up. And, Ooh, yeah. yeah, hold on. So and that's I not. Fr- hold on, Sam. I gotta do some. No, I gotta play some, no, not some housekeeping that's real not quick. Drebin. Yeah. So skin monkey is not a racial <laughs> slur. No, there's it's just not. a it's monkey that is like, shaved. <laughs> it's the weirdest looking thing. No, it's not. It's a weird little thing. I forgot about him. <laughs> I forgot about him. But it's like little monkey, and he likes soda, and he everything. Loves so soda. yeah. So you show up, and this like weird, mysterious dude comes in. And he's got like. He kind of he kind of looks like uh, um, like a Dennis Rodman a little bit with the oh, yeah, hair and the weird <laughs> like the weirdness. Yes. And he comes in. And he's wearing like he's wearing like like a BDU pants and he's got like this suit jacket on and he's just like real s- smooth talking. <laughs> it's like hey man. He has this truck with a bunch of like soda pop in it that he that he feeds to his monkey he's and got shit. Freaking soda machine. And this guy is an arms or... dealer. Um, are they all like this, Zach? Do you know arms dealers? Like uh, no, the few, the, the few, the few that I know. Oh. No, I don't know any, but uh, I don't imagine they all have uh, uh, suits tucked into BDU pants and uh, and soda machines inside their strikers. With skin monkeys. With skin monkeys. Oh. With skin monkeys. <laughs> yeah, it's like a monkey yeah, made no. out of an old man's skin. If you yeah, guys can imagine, it's really that. fucking weird. <laughs> and like, he's kind of, he's honestly kind of cute. But he's really creepy at the same time. No, so not cute at all. It's a, cute. Sorry. It's cute until you walk into your cute. house and it's sitting in the fucking corner. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why I don't associate with skin. <laughs> I, 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 Isaac, what's your take on hairless cats? <laughs> I so, okay. I don't mind hairless cats. I hate hairless. Oh, cats. Kristen so loves gross. hairless cats and wants one. No, you should just sh- shave Francois and see what happens. No. Don't you touch a single hair on that cat's fur. <laughs> yeah, that cat is a fucking saint. <laughs> He's a national treasure. Francois is a national treasure. Yep. Maybe yes. maybe Pia. Yeah, <laughs> Pia's great as well. But yeah, so this this unlocks the weapon shop for the rest of the game. And now the game becomes a fun, like, hunt and peck for the Drebin points. So, like, mm-hmm. every weapon and item that you pick up that you already have or that you don't mm-hmm. want anymore, um, it just becomes worth points. So even if you see a weapon that you already have in your inventory, you should probably go get it because it will automatically become Drebin points. Um, so it kind of changes the dynamic of the game a lot. And this is the which like, is a great system. I'm glad that you don't have to like do that manually because I would fuck. Oh my suck. god! Yeah, yeah, you have to go well, find the cool where he is. is. <laughs> mm-hmm. In a lot of ways, the game kind of ramps up into being a game. Because I think right from the beginning, it's just like, oh shit, hide mode simulator, <laughs> the game. 
Um, but then as the game continues, it's like, oh, no, here's your HUD. And like, oh, here's your game system to sneak in here that involves trading points for items. And like, I don't know, they do a good job of like discreetly putting things turning, on. Turning it into mm. a game. Yeah. yeah. Though at the same time, it does, to me, it gets to a certain point where it kind of starts to feel like a bit much. Um, mm. But I, I think this stuff's not bad. Um, I do got to say, so this whole thing with Drebin, this cutscene. Um, he's talking, Drevin's talking about how he launders guns and these ID tag guns, he can launder them to make them so anybody can use them. Mm -hmm. Um, and Snake's nanomachines are apparently keeping him from using any of the guns because he has the quote old generation of nanomachines. Mm -hmm. Um, and he has to inject himself with a suppressor for the nanomachines and Drevin is just like gung ho. So he does like this weird, like ninja flip. And like tries to stab Snake in the in the, uh, in the neck leg, with it. Right? Oh, okay. He, well, it, probably the leg, but he like comes up and he stops him close to his neck, and then Snake is like, "Okay," and he lets him do it. <laughs> and it's just like, "You're gonna let this strange man that you do not trust inject you with, with whatever this strange thing that you really don't know what it is. You're just kind of taking it on faith." I think, God, I think Snake's just like, I don't give a fuck. I could be dead tomorrow. Stick me with whatever true. you got. Yeah, I need a smoke. That's also very true. <laughs> Will this let me keep smoking? <laughs> can I inject this? Can I inject this with nicotine? But yeah. Wouldn't that be so funny? I feel like Wouldn't that be funny as his uh, nano machines to let him light the cigarette? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be the best. The best I way to light it. Damn it! That's why he's lighting everything. That's why he's lighting stuff on buildings because his lighter's ID tag. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do got to say uh, uh, before he, they go into the striker and all that, when he's like, "Go ahead, check out that M4," and he does like the inspection of the rifle. <laughs> that I was waiting for. That this. was a fucking realistic like depiction. I'm glad. <laughs> Unless he was waiting for this. I was waiting on this. that. Were you like? Were you like? Were you like yanking your dick? When you <laughs> oh, that? No, that like no, no. I had already gotten. I have a I had already gotten my uh, fill of hushy today. But uh, <laughs> but no, I was impressed. God. I was impressed because like, you know, to actually open up the receiver, he hit the button and flipped it open. He pulled the bolt and all that. I was like, wow, fucking leave it up to Konami and Kojima to actually get the details right on something at least. Uh, more like leave it up to Motosada Mori, the fucking tactical advisor on every Metal Gear game. Well, that man, you just pulled that one. You just pulled that. Actually, really good pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of Hi you. Dio Kojima. Then he, <laughs> Hi good old Kojima. Kojima. He, nail, Kojima. he nails the one with 26 consonants. Yes. <laughs> Aunt, Aunt Kojima syrup. <laughs> Oh God! Well, and just I just one final note about Hushy. Every time I hear that name, I hear immediately in my brain two pieces of sandpaper rubbing against <laughs> Just like a. <laughs> Oh, oh, god damn it! But yeah, so I'm glad I can, oh, I'm glad I can appease happened. to what you were expecting, Alessio. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, so I just I had it in my notes to ask you about that scene. So thank you. <laughs> um. But yeah, so then we have a codec convo, and there's just kind of like some segue, segue, segue into uh, uh, a cutscene where a building fucking is collapsed, and there's like fighting going on in the street. Did I miss something? Is that Johnny that we see yes. in the street? Yeah, of course it is. So can somebody paint a it's picture fucking, of Doo Doo John? I, I got so it. I got it. Fucking, I got it. You got it. <laughs> I'm gonna go take it away. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you got old Snake now. He's got his he's got his new shiny new M4, and he comes around the corner, and there's a militia guy standing there, and it looks like Snake's like, "How am I gonna get past this guy?" All of a sudden, there's some very loud flatulence. <laughs> you know, you know, t- t- it's a typical on the battlefield. Um, <laughs> so the mo- you can find love, but you can't find the a worst. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> God damn it, Alessio! All right, Sam, you <laughs> Sam, you take it. Sam, you take it from here. <laughs> battlefield battlefield two, shit in a hole. This is why you don't eat the enchilada <laughs> yeah, MRE. So, <laughs> so there's a lot of flatulence going on, as Mr. As Mr. Uh, Zach has, has alluded to. Um, and this guy is investigating the barrel 
um, the, the militia guy's investigating the barrel, and he starts shaking the barrel. <laughs> and the guy on the inside is like, no, 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 I'm no, I'm not no. done yet. And he tips over the... Yeah, he's like, I'm not done yet. And he tips the barrel over, and there's this guy wearing a fucking balaclava, crouching down with his butt hanging out. And then they're just staring at each other, and he farts. <laughs> he's like, to pierce the silent, he farts. And then, like, this guy is running away from the militia guy with his pants halfway down his, his ankles, farting all the way away. And then Snake feels like this is a good idea. He goes up, he investigates the barrel, and he's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it, you, you get a new thing to sneak around, and it's this oil drum. I call it the doo-doo barrel, um, <laughs> as I alluded to <laughs> the last episode. Yes. Um, so you can use the doo-doo barrel to sneak around, like, like you would a cardboard box. It's quite good. You can also tip it on its side and roll, which is <laughs> fucking amazing. <laughs> La, 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 la. <laughs> can you make him throw up by doing that too? I think so. Um, I think the other cool thing, and I don't know if we've touched on it, because I can't fucking figure out how to do it. So maybe somebody can tell me how to do this. I did it a long time ago, and I know people can do it. Um, the only time I've ever done it in this playthrough is I was too close to an explosion, and Snake landed on his back. Um, but you can go from prone to being on your back, and you can just fucking shoot people while you're laying on your back octo camoed into the ground oh, which is super um, cool i saw it in the playthrough too but i couldn't figure out what the button combination was yeah there's like whatever way that you tip the barrel is the same as the way that snake like hmm. flips and i think it might involve the six axis i think while you're prone maybe you can just like rotate the controller or something i think i, I did that on accident <laughs> one time it's super Cause, cool because you can also roll like snake can just fucking like roll through yeah. the road if you want well, I just thought it was the train because I was on a hill and I was just like on my back shooting at a guy. I was like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> How did That's I get cool. here? When you can go from like you can play dead flat on your face and then when somebody walks past you, you can just fucking like roll over and just pop him in the back of the head. It's super cool. Um, so I'm going to try and figure that out next time I play, but. Yeah, um, uh, on top of what Sam mentioned, you can go back and there's like a dead militia guy near where you entered and there's a Playboy magazine, so you can use this opportunity to go ahead and flip through. Um, it's very high, high <laughs> rendered. Nice. Very high nice rendered. spread of hushy. In the- <laughs> oh, gross. God, when will and we I get mean, away? And I mean spread. Oh, no. <laughs> it's drier than an airplane yeah, sandwich. I immediately regret everything. Yeah, oh, God. you can get a <laughs> petrol bomb and some ammo, and then likewise too, if you sneak through part of the destroyed building, you can get a dot sight. Um, I think for the M4, um, and some sleeping gas mines, which I guess are called SG mines in the game. Um, and uh, once you get through some of the other PMC area and get through the building, you'll also be able to collect another song from a dead militia dude, which is the Zanzibar Land Breeze oh my God, from Metal such Gear a Two. Good song. It's fucking Bunch great. Good. Cue shit. it here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my favorite thing was uh, so Patty Smith, who's gonna be Patty Smith, Patrick Smith, also <laughs> Patty. Oh yeah, it is fuck yeah. So Patrick Smith goes by Patty. So That's anyway, hilarious. yeah, for real, Patty Smith. That's uh, funny. Who's, who's listening to the show? <laughs> um, I guess is in Metal Gear Solid Two territory right now. Um, I can't wait to get him on an MGS Four episode, but he's listening to MGS Two stuff, and he just tweeted at me the other night. Uh, I just got through Q Q Pocalypse in the MGS Two. <laughs> oh my god, was that like, was <laughs> like my. I laughed so hard because I was, <laughs> I was still working at Planet Fitness when that happened, and just fucking just listen. To the, I I gotta listen to that again sometime. <laughs> Yeah, I need to go back. It and was funny because I thought episodes. I thought that my phone was fucked up for a second. I was like, "What the hell's going on here?" <laughs> <laughs> it was like one of those videos. that was like uh, Metal Gear Mondays, except every time someone says "cue it here," it plays all of oh, <laughs> it plays no. all of the first cutscene from Metal Gear Solid Two. <laughs> except whenever somebody says "memes," it plays <laughs> it plays the B movie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, so that that's a thing. But then we're in this downtown, and this downtown area will kind of close us out because the downtown will lead into our last area but that we're not going to cover. It's kind of our breaking point. So let's take a little bit of time real quick to just kind of wrap up our thoughts while we're in this big-ass downtown area. Um, 
This is so saving at any time made this very very fun for me um, because I actually played through this area a couple different ways. Um, this is like the last big war zone moment of this part of the act, um, mm -hmm. and so kind of I used this time to I snuck through normal the first time and then saved in our last spot. But then I reloaded. I've been keeping instead of saving over the same thing. I've been keeping saves for every area, so I can roll back to a specific area if I need to, which has been super fun. Um, I don't know if you can do this with everything, but I uh, put a one terabyte uh, hard drive in my PS3, um, so that's why I have a shit ton of space to do that. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if that's gonna ruin somebody's save data capability, <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm able to do it and it's fun. So, but it's a big open area with a shit ton of firefights. Um, you, if you decide to take part in any of this, you will trigger an alert. And holy fuck, oh. is this game really hard to get through without alerting people because of shit like this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a ton of snipers. There's dudes on like weird ledges. There's people on stairwells. It's just like people are fucking throwing grenades. You can get grenades. You can get a PSS, which is a silenced gun in a locker. Um, I didn't use it, so I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, and then to kind of get out of this zone near a van, there's this alleyway, and if you stay crouched, you can kind of get closer to this big palace area that all the fights are taking place near. Um, and there's just a fucking, like, helicopter, and there's explosions, <laughs> and it's bananas. like Bananas. But I will say it was super fun just, like, popping off shots at PMC dudes and then hearing the militia be like, thanks, man. And it was just like, oh, yeah, dude, I got you. Like, I don't know. It was, like, really fun. So I don't know what it was like. Yeah, I'm sure that was really fun that <laughs> one half of the battlefield was not mad at you. I'm sure that was or fucking Or all of great. the battlefield. You can't anger yeah. the battlefield, Sam. <laughs> yeah, that's where you find the love. But, yeah, how was it for you guys? How you, would you guys get through this? Was it hell on earth, or did you guys have a fun time? Or I killed. Did you, Isaac? Dang. No, that was me. Oh, Sam <laughs> said that. Well, so, I, so that, that's good that you say that here, because there's a fun caveat. As you get close to the fucking palace, the big mm -hmm. battle happening next to the palace, people will just keep respawning forever. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And no, I found that I, out the so hard I, way. <laughs> yeah, so I obviously didn't kill everybody, because you can't kill everybody. Um, but I killed a lot of people. <laughs> and, like, I recalled, I, I kind of, like, slowed down, because I recall that there's, like, a point where... If you kill enough people in an area, snake will f vomit, <laughs> and your your um, psyche will go way the fuck down. So I kind of cooled it on the killing. Oh wow! Oh snake. yeah, I think I've nice. seen that. Does it like show a bunch of crazy flashback stuff too while he's I, throwing? I that? think so. I think so. It's ha it didn't happen to me, but I I, I think so. Hmm. Okay. So Isaac, how, was, how was your foray? This is the part where I died a lot. And I kept on having to restart because every time I tried saving, it wouldn't s save and wouldn't start me over where I saved. It would start me all the way back from the beginning. Oh, yeah. It does it by checkpoints, I think. Okay, that's what I thought. So, yeah, I had to redo this section uh, quite a few times. On. Real quick, were you like getting to a vantage point and then saving and then getting to another vantage point and then saving? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I, that sounds like an awful. I way got to, to play. a point. I thought it would. I thought I would. I thought the checkpoints would were more, um, along the way, and oh. you had to like actually get to like a cutscene before you would trigger a checkpoint. Yeah, it's a. I think it's so, cutscenes or zones. So if yeah, you like, yeah, yeah. exit a zone, it'll checkpoint it. So I died here a lot because I was trying to fight off both. Um, forces and it was annoying but the area was really cool I'll give it that <laughs> yeah it's pretty um, fun um, I remember the first time I played this So, and this is a fun fact so with the iPod um, it actually controls in the menu like an actual iPod so you have to use like the right analog stick as if it's the iPod like touch wheel um, and yeah, you have to like click neat. in the center and stuff it's super cool um, but I remember the first time I played this game, this zone was the first time I discovered like the podcasts and stuff on the iPod. Hmm. And so I just have like a faint memory of just like listening to IGN podcasts and like shooting dudes while I was in a hole, like waiting for the helicopter to pass. <laughs> um, so yeah, shit gets pretty crazy. Um, 
But yeah, so then we enter this little palace area, and uh, there's not really like any sort of cutscene or anything like that yet. There's going to be some cool shit in the palace, and we're going to come across some some familiar faces. Um, but we are going to end it here at the palace as sort of like the midway point through. Um, as you can tell, this episode's already pretty long, so it would just get longer if we kept going. Um, so we're going to try and, and segment it here. But before we call it a night, and before we kind of start our end show stuff, I did want to talk to you guys about like uh, what you guys think so far. Like, are you enjoying it? Um, revisiting and replaying? Like, is it holding up to your standards? Zach, did you enjoy what you saw enough to go out and get a PS3 and play with us? Like, what's what's the verdict? Oh, I, I fully intend on going and uh, getting getting a uh just secondhand ps3 for like 80 bucks and uh playing catch up and actually playing along so i can weigh in on my own experiences uh hopefully next time i'm on nice sam how about you um so the thing about this game um that you immediately find out is that it's kind of just fun to play um like it throws you into it it kind of gives you a second to get used to it and then it's just fun to play um, I like the, the stealth is really fun, it's a little bit more dynamic, and that makes it more interesting to play, I think. Um, so I'm having a blast with it so far, um, aside from the fact that I made all of the Middle Eastern people. Down, so. <laughs> <laughs> As we do. Isaac, yeah. how are you I will, enjoying? Um, echo kind of what Sam said. It's kind of like... When I played 3, it was kind of mind-blowing how the gameplay was kind of fluid compared to the other uh, previous games. But And then 4 took me a little bit, but after um, dying a couple times, I kind of got in the rhythm of it and kind of started to kind of like this game, you know? Um, but... And also, I'm going to keep going back to the whole target on your radar. Um, it's a lot more convenient, which I like a lot. So there's that. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I think my sort of verdict on this, and I've, I've definitely... So the first time I started to replay 4 was in anticipation of 5 coming out. And I was like, five is or four is my least played game in the series. Um, I'm just gonna start playing four uh, in prep for five to come out because they're very similar as far as like the dynamic kind of structure. And so I was like, oh, I'm gonna get used to what it feels like to play a modern MGS game as opposed to like one, two, or three, just to prep for five. Um, and I had just played Ground Zeroes a lot and played, and then I just started playing four. Um, I sincerely, now that I've played 5, I sincerely believe that Metal Gear Solid 4 is like the perfect blend of 1, 2, and 3's storytelling and like 4, Peace Walker, and 5's gameplay kind of fixation. And so mm. I think I think 4 is the old style Metal Gear that plays the best um, and I enjoy it a lot. Um, I think, and we'll talk about it too, but like the, the games, so the games after four, um, excluding Peace Walker, which I think like is a fucking masterpiece of a game, but oh God, uh, absolutely. excluding Peace Walker, the future Metal Gear games are not going to have as much of a focus on story as this game. And so to me, this is like that kind of like final goodbye to like the great Metal <laughs> Gear story. Um, but it's like, I mean, that's kind of what it was for. I mean, if you think about it, like the way that it was developed is sort of this like fucking send off for the series. Um, so it's this love letter to Metal Gear and it feels like that. I mean, it feels like, uh, and we'll, we'll encounter more of them, but it feels like we're getting to see all of our last, all of our friends for like a big final sort of party. One um, last hurrah. Yeah. And it's great. And I then like it. Snake tells the kids who the mother is. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a good game. I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I'm really liking it a lot. It's, it's um, a good game, but it's not as good as Snake's Revenge. Oh no! Good. You ought to get punished. Shut up! Shut up! You pitch black there. drinking motherfucker. I'll kiss my ass. <laughs> no. blast hey, that was pretty guys, racist. Hold on, break it up. Break it up. <laughs> get there's the enough, fuck out of here, you goddamn there's, skin there's monkey. Whoa. There's enough. There's enough dew for all of you. All right, calm down, boys. Not when the dew surgency comes around. Oh no! 
But yeah, mm-hmm. so it's a good game. Uh, so far, we're enjoying ourselves, I think. And uh, I think that we will yeah. just continue to enjoy ourselves. Yeah. Um, Until it goes I off think... the rails and we're all screaming. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not... Well, the game the game itself, like the gameplay doesn't <laughs> doesn't change so much as yeah. far as like going off the rails. Everything else is dope. Act 4 is the dopest video game thing ever. Yeah, so. we'll get to it. I'm just going to go and say I've been having to like beat guests off with us <laughs> to be like, no, Act 4 is already taken. Go away. Because mm-hmm. um, Go away. <coughs> everybody except for old Patty Smith was like, give me that Act 4. Um, but Patrick was like, give me that Act 3. And I was like, I, I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> Act 3 is really good. Act 3 is very unique. Um, and I like just, it a lot. Just the intro to Act 3 sends shivers down my spine every time. Mm-hmm. It's real good. But yeah, so we got a lot of good game in front of us. We're really excited for the new season. Everything's going really well. Um, Zach, thank you so much for being on the show. Hopefully we can have you on next week. Um, and uh, guys, if you guys have any uh, thoughts on this game, uh, get us your thoughts. Uh, you have two weeks from the time that we're recording this. So that would give you uh, until March the 9th to submit anything about Act 1 or general Metal Gear Solid 4 stuff. Um, Currently, the spoiler warning is up. Uh, Once we get past... uh, Well, I guess... So Isaac's going to be playing along the whole way. So once we get past nothing, uh, spoiler warning is just going to be up the whole time. Um, So yeah, please don't write in with any crazy spoiler stuff or please don't write in with anything crazy about uh, stuff that we haven't covered yet because I will either have to edit around it um, which is fine. I mean, if you want to like accidentally say something or say something small, I'll just edit around it. That's fine, and Isaac won't see it. Um, but just be weary. Um, and you can reach uh, me with any of that stuff. Um, either if you're a patron, you can hit me up privately on our Slack or post about it on the Metal Gear Mondays channel. Um, if you're not a patron, which you should be, um, go to you can go to Facebook and message the page. Um, you can private tweet me at AC Summerfield, um, or you can send me an email. Uh, a, it's uh, Alessio A L E S S I O at forevernastronaut.com, or just contact at forevernastronaut.com. Um, but yeah, before we get into plugs and shit like that, um, Zach, uh, what do you want to plug? Uh, uh, two things. I'll, I'll plug since you give me the opportunity. Uh, be on the lookout. Hopefully, I'll be able to get it published and out to you guys this year for my upcoming crime and revenge novel, Persona Non Grata. And the uh, the other announcement I would like to make is I have recently undertaken a new project uh, titled Ocean of Emptiness. It is a space survival horror story starring most of the guys in <laughs> the Forever an Astronaut and Grindcore <laughs> Slack, and I've started working on that this week. It's going to be a fun project, and I think you guys are going to like it a lot. That's awesome. Um, yeah, hold on real quick. and trying to merge the streams, so we're trying to migrate everything over to the Forever an Astronaut Slack. Are there still people talking in the Geek Times? No, today? it's, 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 been, know, it's, I it's been quiet for a few weeks. I've still got that one up on my uh, mobile okay. app. Cool, 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 cool. I just want to make sure. But yeah, so yeah, if you guys have listened to past episodes and you know about the Geek Time stuff, um, I am trying to go through to make sure that we retroactively update all the past episodes before 47 uh, to try and make sure that all the information is accurate. That way everybody who, uh, it seems like most people who find the show decide to start from the beginning and catch up, which is great. Um, but a lot has shifted. Uh, our 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 voices are deeper. Um, we've had we've had we've had deaths in our families. Um, Dang, dude! We've oh, grown hair on our chests. Found uh, love, lost it again. We've we've yeah. plundered several buttholes. <laughs> hey, I gotta say, but guys, yeah. I was disappointed that no one made a comment on the perfect gif that came up when I put plunge in butts. It was quite good. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Sorry, was it the Winnie the Pooh one? No, it was the Donald Duck one. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I I slack from work sometimes, well, well, and things have just. Well, been also, busy. I don't think anyone was actually comfortable on the on the uh, subject matter of that conversation. So, <laughs> I think that's pretty yeah. understandable. Um. So, Zach, real quick, what is your pen name if people want to find your work? On? I will be. Uh, well, I don't have any social media at the moment. Um. But my pen name, I will be publishing oh. under Zach James. It's uh, much simpler than spelling out my whole name, which is even more confusing than the one that Alessio said before. And uh, <laughs> real Italian, <laughs> real Italian. 
Real Italian yeah. ice. Uh, but yeah, so Zach James is what that, that'll be <gasps> under. And when that's out, I'll be sure to post links and, you know, probably like free copies and shit like that to the Slack. Or, and if you want, you can email me. So yeah, that's that. Perfect. Sam, what you got? Where can people find Yo, you? Yo, you can follow me on Twitter um, at Sanjil. Um, I've Love changed it. it. I've changed it for the benefit of those with video. I'm holding up my phone so you can see how to spell it. But for those with audio, it's S-A-N-J-U-U-L. You can find me at Sanjil. Um, you can also go to soundcloud.com slash radio, right? Um, it's W-R-I-T-H-T, on there. by the yes, way. Yes, W-R-I-T-H-T. So I haven't put anything up there. I'm trying to coordinate. It's like trying to coordinate people. It's harder s- somehow to coordinate people that live in the same place as you <laughs> than it is to coordinate internet people. Good old internet people. So fuck, fuck if I know when something's <laughs> happening. But hopefully soon. I, s- I still right gotta now, check that I still out. have that wrestling thing on there. Yeah, I still have this like the wrestling thing on there where we talked about the year of 2016 and how fucking nuts it was for wrestling, but. Um, I've got other things in in mind. Um, I want to bring back maybe have a word. I was uh, I've been wanting to do that for a little bit, and then maybe some other ideas that I've been kind of bouncing off of people near me. So we'll see what happens. Very nice. Um, and likewise too. I know that we've mentioned it a couple times, kind of offhandedly, but uh, uh for those of you at home who don't know, uh, we have all the uh current episodes moving forward are going to have a video component and the last episode the all of the thus far all the Metal Gear Solid 4 stuff is going to have video content and we're going to try to retroactively do some stuff on the older episodes. But if you go to youtubecom slash astronaut, um you can find the Metal Gear Mondays playlist and watch video versions as you continue along if you want to watch what we're talking about, you'll be able to do so on YouTube. Uh likewise if you just don't want to subscribe to an iTunes podcast you can just subscribe to forever an astronaut and uh play youtube videos in the background while you do other stuff isaac you got things that you want to mention um yeah i've been drinking this um pepsi cola stuff which is pretty good it's their uh don't know if you've heard about it 1893 apparently i don't know what that i guess that's the year that it all began this is their uh (laughs) this is their premium premium cola it's pretty good it comes with uh cola nut extract dark brown malt flavor a touch of cola aromatic nut. bitters sparkling water and real sugar so um Ooh. Uh, Ooh. there you go <laughs> therapeutic i yeah, have you fucking tweeted yet i might just tweet that well, we'll how about that it. we'll have to do it in two weeks i i gotta say what i gotta say when i was stationed out in arizona the freaking the real cane sugar that they made in the glass bottles oh, from Mexico. Yes. Oh my god, so good, very good. Yeah, Regular yeah, Coke yeah. doesn't do it but justice. Yeah. So here's here's the deal. Alessio owes the world a tweet because he got 50 followers before we went. You on mean Isaac? Yeah, Alessio. Alessio. <laughs> Isaac, not Alessio. I was about to say, dog. I'm at like 564. Get out of here. <laughs> Woo. Uh, Isaac owes the world a tweet. I do. Now, I'm sorry. Um, now here's the thing. You can go to Twitter and follow Isaac at doesn't have a twit. Um, and if you follow him and he gets the 60 followers before the due date, we won't force him to do two tweets in a row. Two tweets. So, I'll take it. Two tweets. Two tweets. So two don't remember. Don't, so don't remember. So don't forget. If we get 200 likes on the Facebook page, which is like 10 people, Zach will destroy Snake's Revenge on camera. And if Isaac gets 60 followers, he'll, tw- he'll tweet twice. That's hard to say. Tweet twice. I think I'm gonna. I think, I think I'm gonna break out the tomahawk for that. Oh yeah, very nice. <laughs> but yeah, right. um, so yeah, do the things. We need subs, and also if uh, since we changed feeds for the love of God, we've got some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful reviews. Um, but please add more of those iTunes reviews um, or whatever podcast reviews you can. If you don't have a way to do that, tweet about us, Facebook about us, blog about us. That'd be neat. Um, and we will be sure before every side op, uh, I will diligently check the UK, Canadian, <laughs> United States, Australian, and all English Japan, speaking Japan. countries. <laughs> no, English speaking. Well, uh, yeah, I'll check that one too. Fuck it. Why not? Um, I won't be able to read any of it, but that'd be great. Um, I remember 200 likes on Facebook and Zach's going to burn it. <laughs> after I tomahawk it. Yeah. So. 
Yes. But <laughs> cool. So yeah, just to close out the plugs real quick, uh, if you want episodes a day early, including the video episodes, uh, be sure to go to patreon.com slash forever and astronaut. Uh, likewise, you can get access to forever and astronaut, all of our shows. Uh, we're a studio based in St. Louis that specializes in film and podcasts. So currently we have an original series that is available on steam, Amazon VHX and the Vimeo on demand store. And, might be available in a lot of other places soon, but we'll find Is out. Is it available on Betamax? Not yet, but uh, uh, you yet. Can, you can check out Dev Diary, um, which is a currently six episode one season documentary show about uh, game developers and their personal stories. The first season is about the Coster brothers, uh, Sam Coster's battle with cancer while creating Crashlands. Uh, very very good shit. Um, likewise, all of our shows are going to be available for patron backers at a specific tier. Um, so we're working on a couple shows, including a thriller show, a comedy show, and a couple short films. And so including short films that are going to be in the festival circuit, you won't be able to view them publicly. But if you're a patron, uh, you will be given links to that stuff to check out. Um, and uh, likewise, we are toying with the idea of doing a Patreon exclusive podcast show that would uh, consist of me and potentially some other fun folks doing some weird shit. Um, and we will announce that as that date gets closer. Um, if we get enough patrons, we will expedite that and get that done quicker. Um, likewise, Japanopod is coming back. If you guys have checked it out, if you haven't yet, you should. Um, it is a podcast where me and occasionally a guest, I know Sam was a guest and James were guests on the first two episodes, um, talk about Japanese culture things from an American perspective. Um, it will take on a little bit more of like an essay format uh, occasionally, but but I will also still have guests and do some fun shit, including talking about Super Sentai and Power Rangers with Sam. Oh, yeah. Um, new, and likewise, the blanket of the blanket of Tokusatsu. New Power Rangers <laughs> yes. is awful. Oh yes. Um, but we will also uh, we've got a show called Nocturnal Transmissions, which is the Forever and Astronaut official behind the scenes podcast, which will also be picking up a weird format at some point soon. So listen in on that. That comes out. Uh, Japanopod comes out every other Friday. And Nocturnal Transmissions comes out every other Tuesday. Metal Gear Mondays comes out every Monday. And then the podcast, uh, official podcast for Dev Diary, which will have James Reichmuth uh, interviewing developers from around the world while uh, like playing their game, uh, is going to be weekly, and it starts in April. Um, so if you want to get early listening to that, um, it will be available sooner for patrons. So yeah, check all that shit out, patreon.com slash Forever Nationaut, or you can check out all of our current films and all that jazz at forevernationaut.com, including some blog posts, and I just posted one tonight about consistency and flexibility for content creators, and it's pretty fucking fun and has some cool information, so you should check it out. Anyway, I could talk forever, but we shouldn't do that. Zach, do you want to take us to the <laughs> spot? You want to take us to the, the butthole to plunge it? You want to take us to the place to be? Zach, are you dead? Uh, <laughs> so wait, so I'm taking it. I'm taking it to mountain plunge. Yeah, uh, you're gonna you, just you gotta, plunge. You're just gonna plunge the ex, the exit butthole. Yeah, you gotta take us take us to the back. Man. Take us to the hole. Take you us know, to the rim. Zach, you know where to take Job. us. Where are you taking us? To the box. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's time for a tactical oh, advantage. God. <laughs> Yuck. Just a box.